what's up ecosystem award winning broker Michael Meddy educating shippers providing quotes working with carriers managing logistics and arranging overseas shipping tonight's live guest is Michael Meddy owner of Meddy International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping and we're going to spend a long time with Michael tonight talking about the auto transport broker industry. Plus, Joe Albacoco in sales at Medi International will be joining us in the live panel. So bring your questions and buckle in because it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. going on you guys welcome back to auto transport intel i'm jay your host it's tuesday night that means it's time for tuesday nights live and that means it's time for another interview and live chat industry news we do have an information super highway i do want you to feel welcome if this is your first time here please say hello in the live chat let us know what's going on with you feel free to promote your company product or service ask a question, talk to someone else in the live chat, network, get advice, and feel welcome. So thanks so much for joining me tonight on Tuesday Nights Live. Please, yes, hello, live chat. We're going to do that. We're going to do that in a few minutes. We're going to put the live chat up on the screen, so please put your information in there. And then we're going to go into industry news at the quarter hour. We always do this. Industry news is national news, social media news, Broker, carrier, shipper, regulation, news. Oh, and cat lady memes. I still love those. And we're going to do another information superhighway tonight because we're going to talk briefly about what do brokers do, right? This is a show about brokers. In fact, this is an interview with award winning broker Michael Meddy of Meddy International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping. So if you want to know, about what's going on with brokers, what do brokers do, ask questions, this is the show. I mean, you know, free reign, it's live chat. And Joe Albacoco in sales is going to be with us too. Really excited to have Michael and Joe on the show tonight. Uh, we've done a couple of video tests, we're ready to go, we're ready to answer questions and bring the information. So do this, do me a favor, stick around right after this, we're going to go into live chat you won't want to miss it. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That is the voice of Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. You've got the website and email and information in the live chat. 
If you have a dispatch question, broker question, Sue is also a fully licensed broker. So man, we got all kinds of broker information and I know there are people that have broker questions, comments, feedback, etc. So this is the show, take care of that. And if you miss it live and you're watching on demand, leave a comment below. Don't forget about the video description with links and information and participation. Okay, so there's the live chat, it's up on the screen, but I gotta back it up. Please let me know if you can see me and hear me okay, by the way. Uh, Bill Bad Apples was in here first. What's up, Ty and Jay, Car Peoples? Can't hang out tonight, getting up at 4 a.m., sticking around until the industry news that I'm out of here. That's cool. Um, thanks, Bill. Mark Grodicky, Mark at Superflow Systems. Oh, man, I see the super chat coming in. I'll get to that. Watching my Columbus Blue Jackets playing in fifth overtime period against Tampa Bay Lightning. Might be a little slow to respond, but till the chat's over... That's cool, man. Thanks for letting us know. In fact, did you know that MLS is back? The finals are on right now. Are you watching? Let's see. I got a window open. It's Portland versus Orlando. 16 minutes in. Nil to nil. Uh, Kimberly is in the live chat. Monitoring the live chat. Kimberly, thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, look forward to seeing you in the live chat every night. I uh, can't talk to you right now, but we can at least live chat-ish. So that's cool. Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics is here. What's up, Carlos? Thanks for being part of the core. Um, Jake McLeod, what's up, everybody? Hey, man, if you didn't see, did you see the, sh the show last Tuesday night with Jake McLeod, uh, Chief Commercial Officer at RPM? Man, that was an awesome show. Thank you so much, Jake. Thanks for being with us. Danny B says, hello, everyone. What's up, Danny B? Michael Culler, hey, where's the chips and the beer? What's up, Michael? Right, it's sports night. This is your sports bar. Uh, how are we, everyone? Checking in for a good show. Ron at Traffic Inc. Thanks, Ron. Awesome, man. Thanks for tuning in. Renee Hernandez is back. Hello again from Denver. Uh, oh, I'm catching up to, the, uh, to real time. I think I'm almost there. Sue at Murphy Auto Transport Services is in the live chat got a question for sue she's in the live chat and she's with us every thursday at noon on dispatching live silver Mint, this is the car shipping business channel you're darn right thank you so much silver Mint. appreciate that um yes please do hit the like button i can use the likes thank you so much i work on this thing <laughs> i work hard on this show i hope it shows i appreciate it i think it is word seems to be getting around that's so wonderful yeah, what in the heck do brokers do? Well, they take a cut, of course. Nick Medor is here. That's awesome, man. Okay, so Nick is rocking a Super Dispatch shirt today. I need some ATI merch. It's so funny, Nick. You are a mind reader, buddy. I was thinking the same thing, I swear to you, just a few hours ago. I got to get some merch out. I really want to. It's on my list. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Thank you so much. Um, let's see here. What else we got here? Oh, Ty put in the, Ty put in the super chat. Loving the dealer. Yeah, man, we do. We love the car dealer. You know, and that's, that's another one. That's what makes, that's what makes Auto Transport Intel so interesting. I'm including brokers. I'm including dealers, OEMs and auctions in a car shipping business channel. FNS Trucking says, what's up, car people? Hey, what's up, FNS? Thanks for tuning in. Are brokers like dispatchers illegal until you pay the man? Similar. Similar. You could say maybe. We got the balls back to Colorado Rockies. Yeah, we got baseball, right? That is that is good, man. Uh, man needs sports. That sounds like a bumper sticker. Somebody call uh, Barstool. Um, uh, let's see. Gary's Auto Logistics catching up on QuickBooks while listening. That is fantastic, Gary. That's what this show's all about, right? I don't need to take all your main attention. In fact, I'm a big fan of, like, media as a distraction while I'm getting something done. That works for me, man. In fact, when I'm now that I've got this show, after the show I turn it into a podcast, and then you can just listen to it. So make sure you go to autotransportintel.com. 
click on the podcast button and you can follow the podcast and then you can just listen to the show. You don't have to see me or any of this stuff and just listen to me. <laughs> okay. All right. You know what? I do put a little comedy in the show. I hope it shows. I hope it's actually funny. If you don't find any of that stuff actually funny, then yeah, you probably won't like this show at all. So, but you know what? May not be a short list, but that's okay. Because you know what's really cool? You know what's happening? Is, uh, well, there's no events. You, you can't go to any events. You can't go to trade shows. You can't see people in person. All right, it's a joke. See? Uh, but no, there's no trade shows. And so the trade shows have gone into virtual webinars, which look more and more like my show used to look which is kind of cool so now i'm like i'm at the forefront of automotive webinar production and that is something else isn't it ain't that a kick in the teeth listen uh here's what we're gonna do by the way please do let me know i don't want to be too loud i don't want to be too soft i don't want to be too warm or too cold i want to be just right and after the break we're gonna be back with industry news so stick around i'll see you soon and if you check the live chat, you'll see the phone number for Assertus, the email for Assertus. Are you aware of all that Assertus does? We know about the load board where you can book loads. We know about vehicle transport at Assertus. But did you know that Assertus has storage, title and registration, compliance, care, final mile delivery, all under one roof? So if you don't know, go to AssertusDelivers.com. Find out more about how Assertus can help you and your fleet organization that needs the assistance. So check that out. And if you have any questions, you can you can call me. Uh, actually, email me. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Call Assertus. That's what you want to do. Okay, so let's go into industry news. Let's do that. You guys love industry news as much as I do? Uh, I hope so. I really do hope so. Um... And, and, okay, and I'm going to remember I need to turn the audio on because I'm going to play a couple audio clips. How about that? Tonight's show is award-winning broker with Michael Meddy. And if you have any questions about what this is about, put it in the live chat. But we're going to talk about the award. It's the Torch Award. Um, and we're going to find out more about it. Michael's going to tell us all about it. Last week was Transport Industry with Jake McLeod. Oh, wow, look at that. Did you see that? Did you see what Mark just did? Mark at Superflow just bought margaritas for Kimberly. Well, hey. All right. Because I tell you what, we could really use some margaritas. I'm stuck with this ELD punch. Hmm. But I tell you what, I do love that ELD, especially after some punch. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark at Superflow Systems. Um, we got the dispatch, enter, uh, dispatch center ad coming up in a bit. And I'll tell you what was cool. I got to have a meeting with Mark today. Um, that is one of the perks. Um, if you become part of the network at Auto Transport Intel, let's take a meeting. And, uh-oh, Nick, Nick wants to know. Everybody wants to know what's in the punch. Um, so I had a meeting with Mark, and we were talking about some of the things coming up next. Really exciting stuff. Mark, I'm really looking forward to that. So we scheduled, we now have a show at the end of October and a show at the end of September, uh, two different uh, two different purposes. So, hey man, you know what? If you got a reason for a show, let me know. That's how it happened, and that's how we ended up doing Transport Industry Insight, because Jake and I started communicating on LinkedIn. And there you go, and there's your tie-in. Please change the channel to Auto Transport Intel on YouTube. This goes out on Facebook every Tuesday. I'm no longer no longer streaming live on Facebook. So when you're driving versus when you're in the sleeper. <laughs> ah, shoot. That is one cute kitty. Uh, I've been driving for 30 years, running two logbooks. I figure I can make two uh, ELDs work. Dang, ELD just can't catch a break. Well, should it? Because did you know this? Did you read that uh, there's ELD denial? Um, the, uh, okay, the FMCSA boss makes a case why ELD mandate is not to blame for rise in big rig accidents, flatly denying assertions from, uh, assertions that the electronic logging devices ELD mandate is to blame for the recent alarming increase in CMV accidents. 
can't be possible. Because you know what? Racing to get home, because I got 20 minutes left on the clock, about an hour to go, absolutely great idea. Oh, I feel so much better about my ELD now. That's why we drink ELD punch. Now, uh, there is a study that the ELD mandate has likely led to increasing crashes and unsafe driving. You don't say. I've only got an hour left <laughs> of driving but 20 minutes on my egg timer. Okay, well, OIDA at the Trucking Safety Summit says it's time to listen to truckers because the truckers will tell you. Well, some of them. I've heard, I've, I, I continue to hear, I get feedback, and I know, I'm sitting at a desk, drinking punch and talking about egg timers, I get it. But there's a reason, because some drivers will tell you this has negatively impacted their efficiency and how they're able to do business. And you know what, don't blame the LD, blame the hours of service. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, when you can't afford the delivery free fee, but you got a car and your buddy has a dolly. Right? Because you know what? If the if the carrier pay is too high, yeah, man, sit on the back hood and pull it. Or uh, spaghetti strap it. Why not? Uh, what else we got here? Uh-oh. This one. This one blows. Okay. So uh, this was on autotransporteverything.com. All right. So you see the, you see the Mustang... On the wedge. You see that. Uh, here's the Mustang I sold that got picked up yesterday. Unreal. I did not hire transport or have anything to do with this. All right. What is this? All right. Well, we have a collage here. Here we go. Okay. Looking good. Although, as pointed out, no straps. So, what is going to happen? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Oh, okay. That happened. That happened. Uh, wait a minute. What? Those aren't all... Hang on. That's weird. Did we miss some? That is very strange. It skipped some of my slides. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's going to skip them again. All right, well, let me tell you something. What I'm not going to let you miss is... So we got the flip of the week... Uh, okay, tell me, is that the flip of the week, or is this the flip of the week? I think I'm going to go with the second one. I'm going to go with the second one. That would be the flip of the week. All right, man, we skipped all kinds of stuff. All righty. So I created some memes. Okay, so if you are thinking, if this is, this is the meme of the day for the car shipping customer, why is it so expensive? Aren't you already going that way? Okay, there's one scenario we've also got what time will the driver be here i have a hair appointment we've also got i don't need your help i think my neighbor has a truck <laughs> and that's why we say roll the tape okay guys ready all right here we go all right let me turn that audio on let me close these windows. Okay, flip of the week. This is how you get your car shipping news. Okay, here we go. Clip number one. So, yeah, you can. I guess you could do it yourself. Not sure where the DOT is right now. So, so that's good. Yep. That's kind of the do-it-yourself of car hauling. Or you can hire this guy. <clears throat> I can't look, because I know what happens. Don't do it, buddy. And there he goes. <laughs> and there, and there he goes. Oh, oh, yeah. Good question. How did he get out of the window? Oh my gosh. And then, of course, if that's not enough, here we go. This one is just for kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
This is for drivers. Okay. okay, all right, so I want to know which one was your favorite video. Did you did you dislike all of them? Did you love all of them, or do you have a favorite? Honestly, I want you to live chat it and let me know. I don't even know if that's industry news. We've completely gone off the rails with these videos. The dog, yeah, I think the dog is my favorite. The, the guy in the water is awful. I have a hard time watching that. I've watched it like three times now, maybe four. Um, the dog, everybody loves the dog. Do you guys want to see it again? All right, we're going to do this again. Here we go. Here's to the dog. Oh, shoot. That is so funny, you guys. Thank you for voting on that. Yep, I know. that. See, that, that and that's what's funny. That was the original purpose of Facebook. This Facebook we have now is... You know, I don't know. Angry book. I don't know what we've got. I have no idea. All right, so where were we? Oh, my goodness. Um, let's see. Here's some news. Hey, I'm interested in hauling if that load is an automatic. Is it manual or automatic? Because if it's an automatic, I can pick up and deliver tomorrow. Really? Really? We've come down to... I have never heard of that being the criteria of what we're going to book. Okay. Alrighty. Hey, anybody looking for a non-CDL three-car wedge to rent? Uh, I'm going to... Okay, now that we have that off the screen, I'm just going to say flip of the week. Okay. Alright, that's not fair at all, Jay. Now you, got, now you owe them a show. Um... I guess you needed another lock. Warning on the authorized drivers, routes, goods, passengers. Okay. All right. Stay out of Chicago. It's war zone. Minneapolis. All over. Wow. Saw that on Facebook. Saw this on Facebook. Did you know you can make your own homemade cloth sanitizing wipes? Uh, plastic container, glass container, airtight, vinegar, rubbing alcohol, water, Dawn, dishwashing, soap, one part rubbing alcohol, one part vinegar, two parts water. Complete with a teaspoon of Dawn. Fill it with rags and shake it up. There you go. Shop towels. Huh. Fancy that. Oh, now it's time. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to... It's time for the ELD Punch. You guys are in the live chat. <laughs> Michael Culler. Man, this is some great... Yeah, John. Everybody loves the dog. Here's to the dog. Guys, we're going to be right back. Please do stick around. Thanks for joining me tonight. And please do say hello in the live chat. I'm going to be right back. Um, hey, did, did you know about, about the, the Truckify links, links on Central, Central Dispatch? Dispatch? Central Dispatch is like doing what? Uh, no, they probably already know. So if you go in the reference ID, now there are hyperlinks. Copy and paste that into your browser. Book it. Negotiate. Get it while it's hot. With Truckify. Access is everything. Hi everybody, this is Bill Zedites inviting you to become a member of CMG Premium. CMG Premium provides you with an upgraded level of knowledge, research, data, analysis, and much more. With VIP content curated from all of our industry verticals, you'll have more access with CMG Premium. Start your 45 day free trial by visiting autoremarketing.com and click on the green tab labeled members. That's the green tab labeled members at autoremarketing.com. Have access to more with CMG Premium. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. It's 825. If you're just joining, you haven't missed much. We're halfway through industry news, and we do have more news, actually. In fact, what's kind of cool is we just talked about CMG Premium. That's auto remarketing. Go to autoremarketing.com. Check out CMG Premium. Now, you can be a member and you get access to everything, but even if you're not a member, they still have great articles such as, check this one out, Vehicle Subscriptions Near Cincinnati. 
what are vehicle subscriptions and Jay why are you talking about vehicle subscriptions on a car shipping business channel well let me tell you something we do need to know remember there's different verticals we got dealers OEMs auctions brokers carriers shippers regulations services loads vehicle subscriptions are a way that this is going to be a growing segment of car use by the uh, consumer vehicle cons vehicle subscriptions allow a consumer to subscribe to a vehicle just like they would a magazine or uh, a media channel right so here we go um, with roots in the fleet and rental spaces more than 60 years they announced they're offering the monthly vehicle subscription service so this is going to involve what final mile delivery now if it's close by it's going to be a fleet service company but there are always going to be situations where it's outside of the delivery zone this gets into the car shipping arena that's why i'm bringing it up i'm going to always pay attention to this kind of vehicle subscription newfangled tech stuff i find it really important in fact here's another one test videos test videos put the at-home shoppers in the virtual passenger seat um, dealers use of video with customers is growing all the time and it makes me wonder will this will video use with the consumer will that become part of the car shipping industry I actually wonder that I don't know the answer I'd love to hear your opinion but it's possible we're, we're gonna I guess we're gonna find out maybe the hard way uh it helped generate some leads said one dealer okay well everybody's looking for more leads can you generate leads through video and social media as a car shipping business good question mass adoption of video technology in general okay everybody knows that videos have on-screen graphics that correspond to features the salesperson discusses scratching my head that sounds interesting all of the segments have visual aids when viewing these drives on a phone users can move the device to see different perspectives of the interior whoa that's really interesting what if a new cons prospective customer could see inside the truck now nah. okay don't jay jay don't even i don't want to hear your big brother think about <laughs> big brother think about help other stores compete from the comfort of their couch selling further away customer wants to engage i'm just saying we seem to follow the automotive industry in general oh here's another one how to start a mobile repair shop why is mobile repair on the rise it's good marketing and then you click it and then you can get your free ebook and then you can chat it's good marketing always appreciate good marketing here's more good marketing sweetie boy delivers i believe they're in virginia advertising rollback car hauler and drive away that's what i'm talking about that is pretty smart it's not for everybody but it is smart let's see what's the next one um oh i saw this on linkedin today carvana this is very interesting how many times does a customer a happy customer give a gift to the auto transporter it happens sometimes that makes great social media stuff right there love to see more of that don't see enough love to see more here's a good one now here's something you do see a lot on on uh, Facebook all right here's the question is this doable on an 80 foot flat top sleeper and here's the vehicle mix okay one two three four five six seven eight what do you got six suvs two trucks and you might think that's a pretty good question well i guess not for the other drivers add a unit easy easy is this a series question gravy load that in an hour <laughs> what's he say on that movie simplest thing in the world uh hardest part is the hill i realize i know i could haul that in my pickup this guy look at this i could haul that in my pickup boy oh boy oh it's tough asking questions up here here we go oh here's the good one nah your rookie ass needs the new hunter footer to make that gravy load work 
Do you feel better? Okay. Where, and by the way, where did you get the idea that uh, just using nicknames all day was good? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I know. Anyways. Lots of comments. This guy. But here's the guy. Here's... This is the guy that watches Auto Transport Intel. Allegedly. Cut the guy a little slack. Maybe he's new. Everyone had questions someone with more experience thought were stupid at some time in our careers. I still do, still, still do dumb stuff I should know better than to do. We all say our profession is a dying breed. Maybe it's because when new guys show up, we pound them for trying to learn even if they are driving low rails. I'm surprised I didn't say wedgies. Maybe he's trying not to make a mistake before making it and wasting time and money. There, I did my good deed for the month. Back to the... <laughs> but yes, it will fit on an 80-footer with no issue and space to spare. So 1 out of 45 is an ATI kind of guy. That's cool. That'll work. Uh, hey, just curious out of the loads that you guys pull off of the Ready Auto load board, how many of you take the first option or take the offer option or set your own price? What would you say your percentages are? I would say we are 25% taken now, 25% bid offer, 50% set our own price. I always set my own price. Sometimes I lost some because somebody else would grab it for the low pay, which I call chicken nuggets. And this guy, after uh, after some weighing in, it's amazing. People get pretty wound up about how they feel about uh, what would otherwise be just a tool. Uh, if everybody took everything now and never bid over, would Ready continue to put lower prices out to see where the bar would be set? And what we're talking about, what I realized what they're talking about is, yes, they're talking about the algorithm and the technology, which is smart. Because that is exactly, that's a good idea. We need to, we need to look at, right, the choices we make. Obviously, it affects the compare button. You know about the compare button, right? So if people keep choosing the low-hanging fruit, guess what? The compare button average will be equals low-hanging fruit. Here's another one. Anybody thinking about the industry and the way it's being forced to go? More and more dealers utilizing Ready. Ouch, Ready's getting hit. For intake cars, a slight push on Mannheims, and to coerce the utilization of Ready Logistics on the buying end, one dispatch already requires picks and mileage at pickup and drop off. Simple to eliminate the need for CR employees at auctions. We as the driver can do it all for free. Auction track already in quite a few auctions. Eliminate car pullers. In my personal opinion, I see Mannheim going to 9 to 5 operation. All vehicles in and out, ran through ready, and bid on central. It's all in place. I'm open to arguments and opinions. As the meme says, change my mind. All right, well, here's a couple of opinions. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. This is pretty good stuff. Mannheim has been getting free labor off the backs of drivers for years. Nothing new. They were one reason I quit the business. I spent entirely too much time performing free labor for others. And it's not just in car hauling. Almost all shippers and receivers try to get drivers for nothing. This practice should be 100% illegal, but likely never will be. Mannheim will own it all. And many dealers will not deal with ready. Many dealers want to control who moves their cars. When a dealer has an issue, they want to speak with the carrier. And in a quick hurry, I have a couple customers that refuse to let ready touch their cars. I pick up freight for ready that I could not have gotten on my own. As far as 9 to 5, I personally don't ever see that. Maybe on the low volume auctions. The larger ones can't process them fast enough. They need to be open to receive and release cars. I know what they have done on a temporary basis, but never on the long term. What is a? I did not know there's so... Oh my gosh, more ready feedback. Holy cow. Now this one, actually, I remember reading. This one's fascinating. All right, here we go. I'm going to make this big. This is a lie. This guy really lays it down. Ready was a good company to work for four years ago. They do not back for carriers like they used to. They're not consistent, dependable, or loyal in any way. I've been to their meetings. I've been used as a guinea pig to test their systems. When you have all the work and own everything, you can force your way into what you want. I've had plenty of pictures and have done their app. Still have to pay damage claims or get cut off. Over the last four months, my pictures on pickup have been disappearing. My pictures on delivery are disappearing. Sometimes the entire work order after I deliver it. They want me to give them proof of delivery or then I had a vehicle on me that at one time to get paid. 
The most ready has owed me at one time was twelve grand. I have to stop what I'm doing and jump through hoops to get the money. I can go on for days about this, but I'll just leave it at that. I do not recommend them at all. Wow. And then, yeah, this guy at the bottom chimes in. Yes, we're doing a lot of extra work, and they get paid for it. This is really interesting stuff, guys. This is what's on Facebook. This is the real, straight information. This is what carriers are talking about. This is what they are saying. I'm reading it on Auto Transport Intel. It's important. This is really vital industry information, and everybody needs to know. So there you go. Um, no, I don't think so, Nick, but I, I don't think so. But anyways, you know, there's a lot of opinions. So if you want to share your opinion, make sure you join us. Share your opinion, get feedback, get help on growing your auto transport business. September 14th at 7 p.m. is the next Cars on the Move monthly roundtable. Sign up now at autotransportintel.com. Make sure you join Sue and Jay Thursdays at noon for Dispatching Live. Chime in. Cars on the Move Fridays at noon. That's me and Ty connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. Don't forget about the podcast on Auto Transport Intel. Go to autotransportintel.com, click on Podcast, follow, click on the icons and stuff. <laughs> it's pretty technical there, Jay. Uh, there's the podcast button on ATI.com. Hey, this is the show tomorrow. Going to be live with Ryan on autoconversion.net. And we uh, we have a special guest. That's at 2 o'clock. So if you just can't get enough, Auto Transport Intel is live four times a week. And the show next week... By the way, man, I, I'm going to check my... I'm just checking. No, I think we got it all. Yep. I don't know why it skipped some, but it, yeah, no, we're okay. That's the last slide. That's almost the last slide. This is the show next week. So if you love Auto Transport Intel, Tuesday night's live. Meet Auto Sled next Tuesday night. Who's Auto Sled? Go to autosled.com and find out and prep. But tonight, we have award winning broker Michael Meddy of Meddy International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping. There's Michael and his award, the Torch Award. It's a Better Business Bureau. Uh, he Well, he's going to tell us more about it. He's going to tell us about it. That's his website, His Car Shipping Services. You see how this show works. By the way, this was sent to me uh, by a, someone who didn't win, but they were a finalist. Apparently, it's a lot of work to get this Torch Award, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. So we're going to learn more about it. We always do that on the Car Shipping Business Channel. You know that. I'm Jay. I'm your host. And let's see. Let's go ahead and close those. Check in the live chat. Guys, thanks so much for being active in the live chat, saying hello. Um, oh, I see it. There, I see it. I see some interesting... I see some... There's always some interesting stuff in the live chat. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I've got a few more minutes before we bring Michael on. Probably right on time. And so, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to hear a word from Superflow. And then we're going to go into the Information Superhighway. Then we're going to be live with Michael Meddy. You aren't going to want to miss it. We'll be right back. Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com, a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features. Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. 
Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It's Tuesday Nights Live. Thanks for sticking around. That is Dispatch Center by Superflow Systems. Mark at Superflow Systems, he's in the live chat. If you got a question, go ahead and ask him. It's end-to-end -end car shipping software from the moment the lead is taken all the way until the carrier is paid. End-to-end -end software, lots of software along the way, lots to learn. You've got a phone number, an email, and a website for Market Superflow. So let them know if you've got a question. I saw in the live chat, really great, uh, Nick, great comments. Um, it's, now, it's already passed, but yes, put two, Go, put two GoPros on the top of the car when loading and unloading the car with an unclosed trailer, send it to the customer, use it as marketing, nailed it. That is exactly right. And can you imagine how far ahead of most of the rest of the industry you would be if you were doing that? That is, that's cutting edge. Is anybody doing that? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do know. We're going to go into the information superhighway before we get to the interview with Michael Meddy, award-winning broker. Um, and by the way, I did see also... I think, yeah, at least once a show, I probably push the needle to the red, and I try to come back quickly. So I apologize. <laughs> I apologize if I went too far. Uh, but we are alive. That's right. We're alive. We are alive, and we're talking about this is the most dangerous car shipping show there is because we're talking about the entire industry ecosystem in auto transport. We're not leaving anybody out. This church welcomes all. The door, there is no, we don't lock the door, it's open. OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations and loads. Well, maybe not regulations. Okay, no, seriously, everybody's welcome on Auto Transport Intel because we got to understand the other verticals in the, in, in the ecosystem. Can't shut everybody out. And if you don't like something, absorb it, right? Be the carrier broker with regulations that works at the auction and knows the OEMs and has friends of the dealers, right? Now you're practicing Kung Fu. All right, well, the spotlight tonight is on brokers, okay? Um, that's the vertical we're talking about tonight. And I see that as we follow the journey through Auto Transport Intel, Tuesday Night's Live episodes. By the way, this is episode 150 on a Tuesday, in a row. So we're talking about brokers. Now, what do brokers do, right? Brokers are not shippers. They're not carriers. They can be. But a lot of brokers don't have any assets, right? They're not the, they don't, ha they're not the originator of the load, but they acquire the load from the shipper using services and technology and their contacts at dealers or auctions or OEMs. They don't necessarily have the equipment that the carriers have, but they service the lead, the shipper, and the load, and they connect the share shipper with the carrier. Brokers do do things. They're part of the ecosystem. And I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about why do we need brokers, what do brokers do, and I'm not going to argue with those questions. That's not my job. My job is to report on the news, put my arms around the ecosystem, bring us together, and see if I can help expedite some of the information and questions that people have. That's my job. So, uh, what it, <laughs> Michael said, if Jay will let me in, he'll let anyone in. <laughs> oh, oh, and by the way, Ants Transportation. Um, 10 shirts, 20 mugs, 30 pairs of socks. Wow. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to when we can get this merchandise train a rolling, um, because I think that'll be a great thing. Um, and I like some of the logos, but I, I need more work on the artwork and then uh, grow out the budget and then get the stuff produced because I made, I don't know, a few, a couple years ago when I got this shirt and a couple other pieces, it just was really short runs. And as you know, that's kind of expensive. So I need to do some volume runs. Um, got some work to do before I'm ready to do that. But I digress. So here's what we're going to do. 
Michael, I hope you're ready because I'm about to send you an email invite. I'm going to roll a video of Medi International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping. We're going to watch the video. Michael's going to join us. We're going to learn more about what it takes to be an award-winning broker. Please stick around. Medi International is a premier auto and vehicle shipping company offering auto relocation services within the 50 states and most of the world since 2007. We provide vehicle transport for a wide range of customers including, for example, military personnel, car dealerships, car auctions, college students, people purchasing autos online, and people moving to their new homes. To ship your vehicle, you have a choice of hiring open or closed carriers. Open carriers are a cost-effective way of transporting your vehicle while closed carriers are better suited for moving specialty cars or luxury vehicles. If you need overseas service, air and surface carriers are provided to our customers who need to ship their vehicle anywhere in the world. For your convenience, we offer door-to-door -door delivery and pickup. Trust many international vehicle transporters for an optimum and reliable shipping experience. We are A-plus accredited with the Better Business Bureau as well as fully licensed and insured. Visit our website or call toll-free at 1-866-620-1776 for a free quote. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for letting me know the chat was still working. Sometimes I wonder, right, when it just totally freezes. I actually had it freeze up during a dispatching live. But that is a story for another day because here we go. I got a knock on the door. Michael Meddy. I believe, is walking into the studio at Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Nights Live. Michael, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, can you see and hear me all right? Yeah. Looks great, sounds great. Now, do me a favor. Uh, I think I hear YouTube. Now, you can mute YouTube or you can just shut down the uh, tab. Um okay. But either one of those will work. I'll pull up a couple graphics here. And let's see right. here. But, either one of those but I can I can still hear me. Okay, and you can't hear me, huh? I can hear you, but I can also hear me. Because you've got my YouTube show open, which is awesome. Because <laughs> as I do, go ahead. Uh, do you see? Check, check. I don't hear me now. Okay, sorry about that. I just can't find that YouTube channel. Okay, <laughs> all right. I, I understand. Take a look. Let me mute you. Go ahead and take a look. While Michael, it's interesting in that um, you guys know that, and I've seen this on a lot of automotive webinars, that um, when they have speakers and you can hear uh, other speakers, and it's a, it's an interesting phenomenon. Let's check. Let's go and check in the live chat. Um, let's see here. Okay. Can Mike move over so I can read the wall behind him? Ooh. Okay, we'll, we'll ask him that. It's a good, good one, Ron. Thanks for asking that. And now I don't hear me. Hey, Michael, give me a mic check because I don't hear me now. Oh, he's checking his audio. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Zero and 50. Oh, ATI masks. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I thought I was thinking about ATI masks. Like, I guess, you know what's cool? I like the sports, I like the way sports teams have done masks, where they've got, like, you know, they're small, and you see logo, team name. That would be cool. But if it was just, like, this big honking ATI, I don't know. Right? Let me know what you think on that. Um, but Kimberly says yes on the masks. That's an interesting idea. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, yeah. F oh, fail book. That's an interesting comment. Oh, let's put it up on the screen. I always like, I, I like that I, I figured out how to add live chat to the screen because, um, you know, that way, right? It's, it's another angle. And something else I can cut to, you know. Um, and Big Will says, awesome show. Thanks, Big Will. That's awesome. Ryan Girardi's in here. Hey, gang, anything good going on? No. No. It's a yawner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, okay, everybody liked the dog the best. Totally my favorite, too. I like the water. Oh, Justin liked the water one. People think that their truck is unstoppable based on horsepower and torque. Yeah. 
Well, that's what's interesting, right? Like, he was positive he had it. He didn't have to go for it, but he was positive that he could do it. And, uh, and you know what? He probably saw... Did you guys see that video of... I think it was Houston, where a semi... There was the, the water was higher than that. And that semi... No, maybe I'm thinking of a different video. I think that, that semi was stuck. You blame Elaine Chow? Awful weight distribution. That's right. That The flip of the week's problem was weight distribution. In fact, um, yeah, that would be much more important than the straps. Because uh, what you could have seen is you could have seen... Um, let's see here. You could have seen... Um, what am I trying to say? You could have seen the car flipped over on the trailer. We've seen that before. Okay, let's check in with Michael. Um, check, check. Okay, so I can't hear you. So I need your audio back, but I just need the YouTube video closed. And here's what you do. If you can't find, check this out. If you can't find the YouTube, um, what you could do is leave the Zoom meeting. It'll be the same link. You can leave the Zoom meeting, close all your tabs. You can reboot if you need to, and then just rejoin the meeting. We'll be fine. We got this show so long, man. I'm telling you, and that's the thing too, man. You know what? Um, I uh, I do. It's cool. I do video testing. I do a lot of video testing, but. Um, Still, Zoom meetings and whatnot are still really new for a lot of folks. And um, I find that on a weekly basis, I'm now still introducing people to Zoom meetings and um, doing an interview online. It's actually pretty cool. Wrong. Jake Keep Trucking was doing it without consent. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, you're talking about the ELD. Um, ELD providers sell all your info. Uh, checking in from Southern Georgia. What's up, Justin? From Southern Georgia. Thanks, man. Okay, now... Oh, here we go. We got some more live chat. Uh, oh, Michael's already back. That's a fast reboot. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got all kinds of graphics and craziness. Check, check. Mike 2-2. Two, two. Checkity check. Uh, let's see while he's bringing in. Use your right on it. Watch ATR. I'll breathe on you. So there are, there are some buttons at the bottom... Where you join by audio, or you ch you you select the audio input, um, or um, and you can call in if you need to. Sometimes people do that. There's actually a call in number on the Zoom invite, and you can call it on your phone and join by audio and video. And these things happen, man. We you know what? I've done 150 shows. You guys have seen if you've been if you've been an ATI fan, you have seen some crazy technical issues. Because when you go live, I mean, I roll the dice every Tuesday night. Shoot, I roll the dice four times a week. Jay put him on mute. You said, um, I I put him on mute. Well, here's the thing, I did, but it's not that. So try it again. Let's see if we can hear you. All right, I'm looking at audio settings. Okay, so. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna crank up your audio. See if yeah, that helps. Can you hear me now? Check check. Check check. Check I'm, check. Check. Yeah, it's really quiet, and I'm just I'm trying to totally crank it, but it's uh. Check check. Can you hear me? So there seems to be on because when you originally joined, your audio was good. Did you grab, is there a slider on your volume settings? Did you grab any sliders or anything? Because no, when I'm you... I'm for speaker output microphone. I guess I should turn it up. Yeah, go to microphone and turn that up. Okay. And talk while you do. I'm talking. Can yes, yes, me? yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Now go up a little more. That's maximum. Oh, okay. Per you're good. You're at maximum? Yes. All right, I can and I can add more volume to you. Um, so hey, do me a favor, live chat. Can you hear Michael? Okay, Michael, say Mike, check. Mike, check, 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 check. Can you hear Michael? I can hear you. All I'm right. turning up. 
pretty loud and you're at max volume. So what right. could happen at some point during the show, it may uh, may go into like super blast, but we'll be all right. We'll figure Ouch. it out. Okay, Ron can hear you. Carlos can hear you. All right. Ken says good job. All right. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, seriously, anybody who's watched this show uh, for a while knows. I've had a lot of different technical challenges, so it's just part of the deal. But we're here. We're talking. We can hear you. Michael... Welcome to Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Nights Live. Please introduce yourself to the audience and what we're going to talk about tonight. All right. Well, thank you, Jay, for having me come on the show here. Um, like you said, my name's Michael, and I'm the owner of Medi International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping. I made the name as long as possible because that's how Google works and you need search words. <laughs> so putting your company's full name is something that I found to be an advantage. Um, quick background, I got into this business because I was in a shipping business uh, where we would ship packages. We had a contract with the post office and UPS and all that. But then I was approached by somebody who wants to ship vehicles. So I said, well, we ship everything here. I don't see why vehicles can't be shipped. So that was my first step into it. So we took these little pads and put them on the counters where people could ship their vehicles. And of course there wasn't much to it um, in terms of a lot of people just don't walk into a package shop ready to ship a car. Not a realistic uh, thing. Right, kind but, of random, but. Yeah, it was random. So anyway, I sold that business. What's a, what's a year? What's a year on that? When are we talking about? Um, I think it was, we had that business from 1995 to 2006. Okay. Then I sold, I sold that business and I wanted to get into something else where I, I was having younger children and I wanted to spend time with them. So I was looking for a business for sale and one of them was a car shipping company. Hmm. So I went over and looked at it and I wasn't impressed with the way they were running the business. Um, so I said, well, I'll start my own. And that's when the journey began. So, um, and, and when you bought the business, so essentially what you're doing is you were buying into a business that had some level of technology, customers. What do you get when you, right? What do you get when you buy a business and you kind of get into, because brokering is something a lot of people wonder how you get in, right? Right. Um, actually, I didn't buy the business. Okay. I had seen the business and I wasn't impressed with the way he was running it. So you just I started out. doing Google searches and I saw a lot of bad reviews. And then I realized that um, the customers look at reviews and that's how they choose. Uh, of course, price is a, an important factor, but I, I experienced that people are willing to pay a little bit more um, for someone who's got a good reputation. It's their vehicles, like among their highest owned assets normally, besides their house um, and the college that they got to pay for. <laughs> it's probably going to be a vehicle. Well, that's why it's always so confusing. I guess it's the customers thinking, I just want to get the best deal I can, right? I live in a, I live in a world of convenience and capitalism. I got overnight shipping with Amazon. Um, I can, I can dictate most things in my life. Therefore, I should be able to also do that with cars, right? Get a rock bottom rate. Anybody can do it. That's my, that's my feeling from where I come from, from, I, I came from dispatching, right? And so we are, we were booking a car and when I was verifying the load with the customer, I found a lot of resident residents fell in two camps like realistic, easy to deal with, and not right. not fun at all. Right. Yeah, well, we got to set their expectations. <laughs> right. <obviously. laughs> you know, because um, we tell them we could have the lowest price that you want, but the car is not going to move. And at the same time, while we're putting pricing on cars and we look through Central and they make suggestions and, you know, we put our markup on top of that, um, the carriers call to get the job and guess what they want more money. So, so on one end you have the customer wanting to pay less and the driver wanting to make more. So that, yeah. that's become a, a, 
a factor that we have to deal with all the time. And we try to be realistic. We, we want to move the cars because that gives us a good reputation. And we also want to work with carriers that are of good quality. And, you know, we always send the customer uh, an email showing the insurance of the company, their spread, you know, their sheet, info sheet from Central Dispatch. So they have all the information. We give them the driver's name and number, the dispatcher's name and number, and then we pretty much step back unless there's a problem. Uh, and then we're on to the next one. So our efforts are more in marketing and dispatch. Right. And I'll tell you, and that's the thing too, is that um, we know that to make, to, to get the deal and then solidify and make sure everything happens, how, how, how long do you think you spend? How long do you have to spend with a new car shipper? To, you know, to it, all, it all depends. You know, if they have a lot of questions, like, you know, I mean, they ask good questions of how long does it take to get my car there? When will they pick up? And we try to be as vague as possible because, uh, well, not vague, that's probably the wrong word. But, but that's, but it's appropriate because if you're too specific, right. You're overpromising or otherwise. Exactly. That's that's what we don't want to do. That was something I did early on when I was first learning the business. Right. But then as time goes on, I tell them there's a lot of variables, you know, and some people are like so nitty picky. They'll say, well, we want my car on the top rack because if oh, it's on the bottom, oil will spill on it. And then how do we, you know, and I say, don't worry about that kind of stuff. Oil can come off with a rag. Um, Unless it's like a soft top jag or something, right? right. There's always a... Right, but this is where we depend on the drivers. This is why they get paid. Because they load their trucks, from my understanding, based on their pickup and drop-off. They don't want to be stopping, taking about four or five cars off, taking one car out and giving it to the customer, coming back and loading those cars again. It wastes time and creates situations where vehicles can be damaged. Because most of the damage comes from loading and unloading. Right. Well, you know, we talked about um, some of the factors and you were just mentioning some. I know that uh, we mentioned like the, the growth of your business, years in business. Um, what, let's talk about types of shipping customers and seasonality. Okay, well, you know, it's we live in San Diego and our home base is here and that's, that's where we really started. And San Diego is a huge military place. We have the Navy, we have the Marines here, and, and uh, these guys get transferred a lot. So they're going to Quantico in Virginia, or they're going up to a base in Illinois, or they're, you know, they're going all over the place. Um, so we go with them as much as possible. We even offer services to them. Uh, if they need to keep their car right up to the last minute. We'll even meet them at the airport and then bring the car back to our location and that's where it can be picked up. Because again, it's about service. And people don't mind paying a little bit extra for that. So, but you gotta right. deliver, you know, that's the thing. Which is, and, uh, and, and that's where we talk, what's interesting, you have normal seasonality and now you have in COVID seasonality. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Like right now, the military is on a complete lockdown. Um, and I have friends who are in the military and they're saying when this lockdown finishes, it's going to go crazy in the car shipping business because they're so backed up for people to be, you know, shipped all over the place. So wow. I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> it would be great. Whoa. But, but in the interim, you know, we have, um, we do blogging to get attention and, and it's about having Google respond and expand on what you do. So, you know, we set up a, a lot of different ways to market. Uh-oh, did I lose you? Nope. I'm bringing, up, uh, I'm bringing up your website. You mentioned your blog. So there's your site. Can you see it? Yeah. See All right. Like Perfect. And, and, and the idea with this, as you can see, is it's obviously we're in the car shipping business. And pictures, besides the writing, tells you the four ways that we can ship your cars. You know, we wanted to keep it simple. Um, so that's what we did. Right. You got open, enclosed, then you've got roll on, roll, roll on. And then, oh, and then overseas container auto shipping. Right. 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 Um, actually, I talked to a guy about trans rack. 
container auto shipping. Um, cause it's interesting. These other two, yeah, these don't get talked about a lot, do they? No, they really don't. And, uh, there's a lot of people overseas who like to buy American cars. They, they're collectors. They want the Ford Mustang. They want the chargers, you know, or, or any particular thing they like. A lot of times we have a lot of foreign cars that they want, like the unusual Jaguar, the unusual Mercedes Benz, you know, so we get to ship those overseas and we try to make connections in Europe, for example, so that if we do ship one, uh, we might ship it to Bremington in, in Germany and I'll have a, someone just like myself get the cars at the port and get it to the people's homes or as close to the home as possible. Um, we work heavily, like you're, you're, as you're scrolling down, um, we really want to get a lot of reviews. We like to call the customers once the order is done and see how it went for them. What was their experience like? Um, how was the driver? Was the carrier concerning uh, the way he was doing his job? Because we like to know. Because if the owner of a company has drivers, he should know if those drivers are doing a good job or not. Right, because now his name is on the line, and um, so we feel the reviews. If if we're doing something wrong, we'd appreciate it if somebody would come along and you know tell us, hey, we didn't like this or we didn't like that, or you're a little squishy on your pricing, you know, stuff like that. But again, it's all about setting um, expectations that you can actually meet. So. That's what we do, and that's what I think our website is. I mean, you can see we have a lot of reviews. We joined the Better Business Bureau um, after being in business for a couple of years, and um, they throw a lot of work our way now. A lot of people call the Better Business Bureau, mostly the older people over 50, and say, I want to ship my car if you recommend anybody. And they're always sending us leads. So that was a nice little thing we didn't expect by being a member of that. And then there's, again, the, and then yeah. there's, yeah, there's the blog. That's a lot of work to keep up on a blog, isn't it? Yeah, it is a lot of work. But you know, I hire people to do that um, who are, are good at it. They're professionals. That's what they do. And I and I found an amazing website because of my son. Uh, it's called Upwork. I don't know. Have you heard of Upwork? Yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a gig worker. Science. Right, you can have projects, and and they work with you, and you're constantly in touch with them, and going back and forth. Well, oh, um, you got a lot of posts. Um, we, do, we do two a week. Wow. And and we post it Breaking on our web. yeah we're we're um we're posting on our website. We have Google My Business pages, and I put them regionally, and we post on each one of those the same that we put on our website. We have a Facebook page, we post on that. And of course we have a LinkedIn page that we're building groups and we're trying to get like the auto dealers and we'll, we'll, we'll put out messaging that's to their advantage or something that they would need. Same with auction houses and same with overseas companies. That well, that, and, and so that, see, that's the thing. I'm glad you mentioned all that. I think that's part of the secret ingredient of being uh, a well-known broker and uh, a, generating a big book of business is lots of marketing. Right. That's it. I, I mean, nobody's going to use you if they can't find you. And and I think therein lies, uh, there. there's a question. A lot of carriers have the question, why are the brokers part of the business? And as the carrier, to take the time to do that level of market it'd be like asking the broker while doing all that to be driving a truck it's it's kind of yeah. hard to do it all well, well it? what I, what i surmised from all of this is that the majority of drivers are smaller companies you know they've got maybe one or two trucks all right 80 they've to 90 percent of, of the industry yeah, and they've got a lot on their plate. They've got all that responsibility and liability sitting on their trucks. They've got to go and uh, load and unload and look for load. Maintenance, constant right. maintenance. Yeah, and then there's the inspection stations. You never know what you're going to run into there. Uh, I think one situation that just comes to mind is uh, we were picking up 
or a carrier was picking up a car for us and they loaded it on and off they were driving and they get pulled over by the police. And the police had dogs and what they found was there were drugs in the hubcaps of the car. Right. And I was shipping, you know. So even the police called me, what do I know about this? And I was right. like, a broker. And, you know, but, you know, fortunately it was marijuana and that became legal. So it kind of like doesn't really matter. It anymore. worked out. <laughs> but you do, and you hear about those. I mean, I know, especially in like Arizona, New Mexico, uh, Texas, you hear about, you know, that's a that's a possible thing, right? And then that's man, that's that's one of what a hundred or hundreds of situations that you didn't see coming, right? And now you have to you have to probably work with the customer. Or, well, in that case, I don't know if anybody's working with the customer except for the cops. I don't know. Well, the, the I don't customer know. Will disappear. Right, there is no customer at that you know, point. You know, when it's a 1969 um, Ford Falcon or something, you know, they're just, uh, it's just the car, probably the drugs in it are worth way more than the car. And if they lose it, they lose it. Well, you know, and you know, I had heard, so there was like a story where carjackers will they'll jack a car and they'll leave it in a residence for a couple days to see if anybody comes by and picks it up. Huh. And if it sits there long enough, now they know it's probably clean and they'll go get it. Probably the same thing after you've carjacked it and filled it with drugs, do the same thing with the with the transporter. Have them deliver, tell them you'll send them, you know, grocery store gift cards, let the car sit for a couple days and then go pick it up. I'm probably not that far off, but uh, um, but it is interesting, right? Um, let's see here. I'm gonna look at. Oh, and I wanted to say this too. You're absolutely right in talking about marketing. Is that we finish transactions? We all do this. Maybe you don't, and maybe that's part of the success. But we all finish transactions, and we forget to ask the customer how did it go. Right. That's very critical because that's what drives reviews and you've got to spread those reviews everywhere you can. Um, but like I said, a lot of the people in the industry, they are the drivers and they have a lot of responsibility. And I think that's where a broker comes in because now we can get them loads. And then sometimes we have certain routes that we start getting because we cut out all the, the places that are difficult like in North Dakota and certain places in other states that are very out there. Yeah. So we're trying to stay with main hubs. And we even tell our customers that we go, you know, if you want your car and it's got to be delivered 350 miles north of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you're not going to find many drivers <laughs> willing to drive their car haulers all the way out there. You know, I said, why don't you meet them? In Milwaukee or in Chicago, you'll save yourself a ton of money. And, oh, you know, amen! And you'll get and your car moved. Get your car back, you know. So we, we make suggestions like that for the for the people. Some people say, "Well, we want to close carriers," and then they hear the price and they have you know to set their expectations. You know, to say, "Well, you know, an open carrier to a good location for pickup and drop off is what's really critical to save money and be efficient." Yeah, no, amen. Now, hey, um, in the live chat, can Michael, give me another mic check. Can you guys hear Michael okay? Can you hear me? Check, check, check. Yeah, I'm turning it up. I'm still okay. turning my volume up to make sure I can hear you okay. There's still a, there's a, there's a hint of, of mute. Not mute, but just, it's not as loud when you first joined, but I'm still picking you up, so we're, we're going to keep going. Okay, they say yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Christopher, thank you so much. Ron says, sounds good. Carlos, yes, we hear. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so sensitive. I tell you, 150 shows later, I'm so sensitive about technical issues because I've been through it all. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. So, Hey, bitter business bureau torch award. Tell me about it. What's going on with the torch award? Well, you know, we got to, as a member of the better business bureau, I didn't really do much with them. I just wanted to keep their credentials and give the customers an opportunity. If they have an issue, they can 
make a complaint. So at least I know, rather than not knowing they could be, you know, hitting in all these other places. But the Better Business Bureau um, is a good organization to be in. It, it gives you good credentials. And we started having customers call and in our efforts to get good reviews, some of them would call the Better Business Bureau and leave reviews. We, we found that to be very good. And the more reviews you have that are positive, the more work they throw your way. <laughs> so uh, we right. found it to, to be a good system that way. And it's good to start to get to know some of the people there, like in any other business. You know? Right. So, okay. So you're into that's, and that's another, that's probably uh, building a relationship with the Better Business Bureau is, I'm going to assume, is not common knowledge of how to do that. I would say it's more for the people over 45. That are more aware of the Better Business Bureau. Okay. The younger people are more concerned with Yelp, which we tried to get on, on Yelp and advertise. Um, it was horrible. Those people had no understanding whatsoever. I mean, choosing a restaurant with Yelp is a lot different than choosing a car. So carrier. Yelp, they understand auto, or they understand restaurants, but not necessarily auto transport. Maybe well, something well, like that. Everything they can, obviously. They yeah. Can. And 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 thing is, and it is, it's true. Like I went, to, I was I was traveling, went to went to a city, looked on Yelp, and that's how I chose the restaurant, and I was happy with it. Right. But in auto transport, it's not as. And again, right. we're we're just talking, but this is good feedback, right? In fact, if you work at Yelp and you hear this, probably not going to happen. But if it were to happen, it'd be yeah. good feedback. Yeah, it would be. I don't think, it, I mean, you wouldn't buy a house on Yelp, would you? There you go. A good, hey, great things. comparison. You would yeah. not buy, nobody looks for real estate on Yelp, right? This doesn't happen. I've never and I heard of that. If you were in an area with the pricing, because of the, you know, the sliding cost, the closer the, the move, the cheaper it is compared to the other side of the country where it becomes expensive. So you got that sliding. So Yelp probably figured we can get some of this, you know. And they did. They got people like myself for about two years uh, slugging it away. The people were really price conscious. They're getting a lot of quotes from people. You know. Right. But one of the things we do, and, I, and we had thought about that before, is we always ask the customer when they call in to get a price, we want to get the order. And um, we'll say, what, what, what can another company do that we can't? You know, and they say, well, they'll have a lot cheaper price. And we'll say, and if they can't move it, will you be calling us back? <laughs> because it's all down to moving it. If, if, if Central's moving it for $900 and some broker's quoting it at $700 and he wants to make a markup, good luck. Because it's not going to happen. And he'll have a customer who will be upset. And that kind of hurts the industry. You know, yeah, that's a flaky industry. Just like... A lot of people who used to make fun of car dealers, you know, you can't trust that guy. He's a car dealer. You, know? you can't believe what he says, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. so. Well, it, it, you know, it's interesting, by the way, on Yelp, do people use Yelp to search for buying a car? That I don't know. I don't know uh, that either. I've never even wondered that, but. Well, we could do it now. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I like to, you know. Sometimes I try to break things live. So, um, you know, and what you just said, if, uh, what do you say about the customer? By the way, types of customers. What types of customers? Could you categorize some of the types of customers like POV, military, um, Snowbird? What other types of customers do you like to specialize? Yeah, Dealers? You've got, yeah, dealerships are big. And we encourage them. We write to them and blog to them. Uh, reach out to them all the time and tell them, increase your sales, open up your market. You don't have to just sell cars to the area you're in. Start looking for different kind of cars, market it nationally, because you have the ability to get it there. And that's where we come in. And that's what we promote. Um, so we have a few dealerships that we're, it's very effective with. Um, the only problem is they could be temperamental from time to time. So if it doesn't go exactly what you said, they're yeah. customers them and they have to press us and we have to press the driver 
<laughs> so, well, it's, and it's this is problem. where, right? This is where vetting the carrier becomes so crucial. Right. Because the wrong carrier messes up your dealer relationship. Oh, yeah. And it can give you a bad reputation, you know. But that's why we don't take cars that go way out of the way that the runs are pretty common because that's where the drivers, that's where the meat and potatoes are. And that's what they want. You know? So we want to stick in that category. And that's that seems to be a common theme, right? Whether you're a carrier or a broker or maybe even a dealer is to know your lane. Right. Right. Yeah, because you can't be the everything to everybody and make everybody happy. Right. But then well, discovering your lane, that, you know. are you going to, I guess you, what, what is it? You got to break some eggs to make an omelet? That's it. Um, I think that it's probably a good time to bring in Joe. What do you think? Yeah, I think you want a shot. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send a invite to Joe. Oh, there we go. Cat's out of the bag. Jay is sending an email live on Auto Transport Intel on <laughs> Tuesday nights live. <laughs> and, uh, and also we're going to take, we're going to say hello in the live chat too. Um, yep, there we go. So there's the email that's been sent. Uh, and I'm just going to check the live chat here. Let's see here. Oh, Candy showed up and everybody went crazy. Uh -huh. um, Candy is you with... Uh, Candy is in person or tree? She's, she's with Seaport Service, Jacksport Storage in Jacksonville. Oh, okay. Um, you know, on Auto Transport Intel, we've got, uh, we've got many people now that I call part of the core that week after week we hear from, we see, they say hello, they show up, they tune in. And I mean like Ty and Brian Pepson's here, Ryan Girardi's here. There's actually a long list. Um, and by the way, I'm working on putting that list together because that's where the t-shirts and the mugs will go first. So we should, I should put a, get a, I should get a running list because I want to make sure everybody gets on the merchandise list. Ron at Traffic Inc is here. Uh, while Joe is tuning in, who else we got here? Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, Market Superflow, Sue at Murphy Auto Transport. Joe, can you see us and hear us okay? Oh, there he, here he comes. There he is. There he is. Oh, and he's gone. No, he's back. Hello. Hey. Hey, Michael and Jay. How you doing? What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. So you can hey. see you can see us and hear us? I mean, he's smiling. <laughs> I, 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 I can see Michael. How you doing, Michael? Okay, cool. I'll tell you what. Good. We can hear him. We can see him. Let me do something. I'm going to turn my audio Well, thank you for having bit. me. I'm, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the show. I've been watching it for a while. you got a lot going on there. You know, I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I try to... My goal is to and it's and this is a this is a this is a tough nut to crack but my goal is to create a show that anybody in the industry can benefit from watching which is one heck I'm of here, a I'm crazy thing to do say it again joe we're not hearing you joe and maybe he's not hearing us, Jay. Maybe. He, he was a... I heard him for a second, then it got a little garbled. But he's here. And I'm not sure if he's checking his settings. And we did a test. I'm hearing my voice being fed back and I'm getting an echo. You're hearing an echo. Okay. Do, hey, Michael, do you think he is watching the YouTube channel also? I think he's using his phone. Okay. You're using your phone, right, Joe? Okay. All right. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Because no, <laughs> that's what I mean. It is. It's a process. So, hey, well, Joe. Joe well, what, the, yeah, the, go ahead. No, I, I, I think we're, I think we're good here. Can you hear me? Okay. I hear you can great. You you're great. Yeah. yeah. And I okay. know that echo can make you crazy. That's right. Uh, we're doing good now. Okay, that went away. Okay, yeah, and the audio's it's crisp, 
So, all right, so we're here. So, all right, Joe, welcome to Tuesday Nights Live. You do sales at Medi International. You do. So, so please say, oh. he say hello to the audience and please say more about what it is that you do in sales. Hello, everybody. What I, what I mostly do is I answer the phone. Michael does all the heavy lifting by getting my phone to ring. And I talk, I talk to the customers and like and Michael hit a lot of my a lot of my points was number like the number one thing to do is to that's correct okay. and so so he kind of I hear you and I see you and uh, we lost that last word I don't remember that happening in the video test Michael. I, I, yeah, I saw his, he was speaking, but uh, his point was lost. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear the end of it. Right. Joe, can you hear us okay? I don't think so. So how about this? Have, there, there's, there's, have there's, Joe there's leave. There's a delay going on there. Yeah. Have Joe leave the meeting and try to rejoin. Try that. And then if that, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll, we will, we'll figure it out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I think he clicked a button. I think, or we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna go into the live chat for a second. Yeah. So Ken says Joe is fading in and out. Uh, uh, what? Nope. Okay. Now he's gonna. Oh, Michael might be putting the kids to bed because <laughs> this show goes on forever. Well, that's Michael. Michael Color might be putting the kids to bed. Uh, let's see here. In the meantime, while Joe's doing that, I'm going to go back into, because i got some other questions here. Um, leads. Let's talk about leads. What can you... Oh, well, Joe's back. We're going we're gonna to cover leads, because I definitely want to talk about that some. That's a pretty big topic, especially with, uh, with people getting into brokering. Um, in fact, what, don't most broker business... Okay. Can you can you see and hear me now? I hear you. Clear. Can you see oh, me now? Yeah, and I see you. Okay, that that, that sounds much better. Oh, sweet. Okay. Could have just been a connection thing. New technology. Exactly. This is, this is my third time third time using Zoom, so it's new to me anyway. All right, we're here. We made. I was okay. going to ring the thing, but there's you know, Joe. Please say hello. Um, once again, please introduce yourself to the Tuesday Nights Live audience. I'm, I'm Joe Albacoco. I work with uh, Michael Meddy. More technically, I work for Michael Meddy, but he's such a great guy. I feel like I'm work, just working with him. You know, he, he treats me with respect, and I, of course, treat his company with respect. And um, I've enjoyed working with him. We've been together over five years now, and uh, everything goes well. And he does pretty much all the heavy lifting. He, he gets my phone to ring, and all I got to do is convince the customers that their best bet is to do business with us and not another company. Are you hearing me okay clearly? Yeah, no, I hear you great. And so is that a lengthy process? My assumption is it is to some degree. Um, my, my average call is like, uh, my average successful call is like 18 to 22 minutes. Now that you is know, a my number statistic, one, yeah. The number one thing is, as Michael said, is you have to give the, the customer has to, I have a question I like to ask, I say, you ever shipped a car before? And if they say no, I said, did anybody take the time to explain how the business works. And so I simply explain how the business works, what we do, what the trucker does, and try to give them realistic expectations. I can't get a driver there in an hour. I can't, you know, there's things I cannot do. I can't give them a guarantee. That's a, that's the one thing I argue with people like, I, I can give you a guarantee, but if a driver does not show up on Friday at two o'clock like you want, what am I supposed to do? Ship your car for free? I mean, what is it you expect this guarantee to do? Well, I only want to deal with a company who can give me a guarantee. Nobody can, you know what I mean? It's just not realistic. You know, again, right. realistic expectations. And of course we try to under promise and over deliver. You know, Mike does a great job doesn't doing the dispatching. Uh, he hires great drivers. Only had one or two instances we had a, a, a problem with the driver, you know, showing up at 10 p.m. to drop off a car or trying to pick up a car at 5 a.m. Uh, in, in all the years we've been shipping cars, only had one car damaged. Those guys are great. Uh, the car was damaged because it was a sailor had lowered the car, and when they pulled it up on the ramp, the air dam got damaged. But otherwise, nobody complains about 
I got a scratch here, a ding there, a cracked windshield. You know, it just never happens. The drivers do great jobs. And I, I like that. You know, and that's the thing is I, I like it when people talk in realistic terms about managing expectations and also you get people that want the car picked up in an hour and they want a guarantee. Why do, here's the thing is, I'm not trying to have fun at anybody's expense, but I'm big on trying to get people to be more realistic. Why do people, why do some people come into car shipping with ideas that are so unrealistic? They what? simply don't know because they've never done it before, and they think it's like a bus that comes along every 40 minutes. They can just dial a number, and a truck pulls up in front of their house. They're like, no, i got to find three things. I take three stars in the sky up to line up for me. I need a driver on your route. I need a driver on your schedule. And more importantly, i got to pay him enough in order that he picks up your car and not somebody else's. And so i got to justify the price. And right now, due to the COVID and a lot of drivers not driving, the price has gone up and I got to explain that and it just, uh, and I, 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 not as many drivers are driving and the ones who are driving are only picking up the cars that are paying the most. You can understand that. Can't you? And they're like, yeah, I can understand that. You know, why is it $1,700 to ship my car? I shipped the car two years ago for 900. That was two years ago and it wasn't during COVID and it was, you know, whatever. It's, two years ago has got nothing to do with today. And two weeks ago has nothing to do with today. And I mean, ask Michael, the price has been going up just it, the drivers are just if you don't list if you can't get a decent price out of them the car won't move and i'm not gonna uh waste their time or my time they, they yeah i listed with medi and they they couldn't get my car picked up for two weeks well if, if you can't if, if, it, if it's a 1200 dollars transport and you're only willing to spend a thousand i'd much rather have you waste somebody else's time than mine because <laughs> you're gonna be calling, you're gonna be calling exactly. me every day Where's my driver? Where's my driver? Where's my driver? And like, I don't have one. We're 200 bucks below market. I'll probably never have one. So I, I just don't, I, uh, uh, I just learned this. If I can't get the right price out of them, I, you know, well, good luck with somebody else, you know? Right. But again, I, 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 I try to, I try to land every customer. Like, and again, like Michael said, you know, what is it you're looking for that I can't provide for you? You know, you, oh, I gotta, I gotta make a few more calls. Why? I just explained to you how everything worked. You know, we have a good reputation. You know, again, first thing I asked them was like, how did you get our phone number? You know, it's either Google or a Better Business Bureau. And if they, if they got it from Google, I'm like, you ought to check out our Better Business Bureau page. We got an A plus rating. We got Torch Award. And also I said, and, and I said, in the future reference, you're going to hire a small company, do anything. Always check the Better Business Bureau. I said, a small company, I said, Better Business Bureau is 500 bucks a year. Whereas Michael spends thousands a month on Yelp and, and, and well, he doesn't use Yelp anymore, but Google and all the blogging and all the work he does, he spends all day getting my phone the ring. And so the Better Business Bureau is 500 bucks a year. But why would a small business not be on there? Because they had a D or an F rating. And so they left the Better Business Bureau because it was hurting them. Or we got an A plus rating. That's like, bang, we established credibility in one second, you know? And so that really works out. I want to also, real quick, I want to thank Nick in the super chat, in the live chat, gave a super chat. You know, um, just like any other business, right, we need, uh, we, we need, uh, there's a financial piece that keeps this business going. Auto Transport Intel uh, can really use your help. And when you guys come through in the super chat, Nick, thank you so much. I never ask anything from anybody that doesn't make any sense. But Nick, I want you on the show. Please email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I can tell that there's others in the live chat that want to meet you as well. So I just want to say that. Uh, Joe, you're nailing it on the head. What's cool is that the way you're talking, I think, can help bring some brokers and some carriers closer together. Because if the shipper's unrealistic, that's where the problem begins. And if the broker lets the shipper be unrealistic, now it's the carrier's problem. So when the broker holds the dam with the shipper, it's a better life in the industry, in the ecosystem all around. So that, man, we love it. We agree with what you're saying. And you know these things because you've been doing this a while. I've been doing this about seven or eight years now. Okay, that's long uh, enough. I, I, I long learned time. writing writing orders doesn't do anything for our company. We have to get cars to actually get picked up. And 
if it's out of your price range, then I can't help you there. You know what I mean? Like if you only got twelve hundred to spend, and it's a fifteen hundred dollar transport. I can't help you. You know, and it's, people all tell me all the time, well, somebody else quoted me twelve hundred. I was like, well, you should call them back. I can't do it for twelve. <laughs> exactly. For it. I know. Then call them back. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Though that's the thing too. Is he? We're here. Hey, buddy, can you do me a favor? Boy, when people ask that too, they lay on the sauce. You know, like you know, I, you're cool and all, but this is the price. And yeah, I'll do you. I'll do. We'll do. We'll do you the favor of doing a great job. When you pay the right price, there's no need for fifty percent off favors. I don't know how that happens, but you hear that a lot. Hey, do me a favor I, on I this. Imagine one. these brokers are calling back. They have to be calling back their customers, saying like, "Yeah, I know I told you I'd move it for six hundred, but only one driver con called us, and he wants a thousand. You know, what I mean, see right back where you were when you were talking to me. You know, what I mean, I mean, because it's going to ship at a realistic price. Nobody, no driver is going to pick it up at. Three, four hundred dollars, even two hundred dollars, a hundred dollars below market. They're gonna, they want as many dollars as they can, and especially now, but a lot of drivers, especially cross country drivers, they're laying up. You know, they're, they're, their family saying, "Hey, you're not driving cross country, getting COVID and bringing it into the house. You're not leaving the house or whatever." There's less drivers, especially on long runs. There's less drivers, and supply and demand, capitalism. You know, you if you got a truck with 10, 10 spots for cars, you're gonna pick up the ones that are paying the most on your route, on your schedule. And what we paying? That's it. That's that's the nutshell. That's, that's the industry in a nutshell. Larry, I don't have my driver. I can send to your house to get your car, and that's they, that's what they assume. I have. I employ all my drivers. I own all my trucks. Right. That's part you, of it too. Yes. This total lack of understanding that it's a network of people. Right. That's, right. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. Anybody who's never shipped a car before thinks that I own the trucks and I employ the drivers. I explained to them right up the front. Right. I don't I don't own any trucks. I don't employ any drivers. And I think, see this is where and we know this is this is where it gets interesting when we search we can we can search and find things locally or we can search and find things nationally. And if it now uh, with the way that you can uh, buy space on Google, somebody might type in ship my car from Scottsdale. And because you use Google well, you show up. So they think you're in Scottsdale. But you're in Fargo, you know, and you're not even, you know. So that's, that's I can understand some of that confusion. But this belief that, di that time can be dictated, not to mention on the market value uh because I, lo I love to talk about how there's so many unrealistic expectations. And what I'd really like to figure out is, once we create that uh, succinct marketing message that auto transport's not cheap and that you can't make up how it works, then we buy billboards across the planet that explain it real quick. It's not cheap and you can't dictate what happens. Here's what I want to say. And I'm going to throw it back to you. But you spent all your money on a nice hotel. You went and paid all this money at all these theme parks that charge a ton. And then you bought this brand new $60,000 car. You spent all your money everywhere else, but you want to go cheap on the shipping. Why? Well, we're not going to answer that question, are we? <laughs> the one you were talking about earlier about leads... Yeah, leads. It's really bad for the industry. You're going to have these people competing. You know, they say, get three free quotes, get five free quotes. I mean, they're going to be driving the customer crazy over time right off the bat because now they've got five different companies calling them. The brokers are under a lot of pressure to get the job, so they're pricing them too low. And then they, they can't move the car or they're, they're hurting the truckers who have to take them at the lower prices. And that could put them out of business. I think what Joe was pointing out was really good that um, the prices have gone up. Well, they need to go up because realistically, they're not going to move, right? And to buy leads and try to compete with that way of getting your your leads is it's just not going to work. To pay for them, I'm talking about like you know you can pay a buck a lead, eight bucks a lead. You know they negotiate based on how many people they give the lead to. Um, exactly. Yeah, and that's why we decided to go the route of organic growth. 
joining organizations, uh, marketing, you know, the best we can by using various platforms like, you know, um, Upworks where I can have people blogging for me and, and all that stuff. So everybody's working and, and you can tell, like, I mean, Joe is moving up cars. Obviously he's been here quite a while and he's getting paid and we're getting paid and we're making money. Um, right. And you created your own leads with organic search right. optimization methods, right? Yes. Plus, and, that's, and that's not the only way you get business. No, it's not the only way, but, but those are the ones that are the most sincere about moving their cars. You know, um, and Joe mentions that too. I go, how are they doing? He goes, well, the phone's ringing and the ones who are calling want to place the order. Um, I love to hear that. I, that's what makes me feel good. What I don't like to hear is, yeah, we got four phone calls and we couldn't get any jobs. <laughs> that would be that would not be good and everything happens you know it, it, it could be anything um, but it's it's a fun market to be in um, transportation I mean there's nothing there's nothing in your office there's nothing in this your house there's nothing anywhere that hasn't been on at least one truck once right right Ty likes yeah. to talk about that too yeah, I mean, even the cars, probably there were bits and pieces that came from other places, you know, like who's manufacturing the seats or who's, you know, they're not all done in-house. Joe, is there a time, do you, do you notice a pattern of when sales heats up or calls heat up? Are there patterns? Earlier, earlier in the day, most people want to get things done. That's why, you know, even though uh, I say I, I work out of the house, I make sure the phone the phone is on and the tablet is open. Everything's ready to go by 7 a.m. And then, like I say, uh, 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 we're on lockdown here. I'm not going anywhere, so I answer the phone when it rings. Somebody calls me at nine o'clock at night. I call. I, I talk to them, whether it's an existing customer or somebody looking for a quote. You know, and nobody's looking to ship their car. Everybody calls you. They just want a number. You know, so you got to. I got to try to like get not into their heads, but I try to get to know know them a little bit. Compliment their car. What are you shipping? Oh, it's a. A 1964 Impala, really? You know, what'd you get for that? So I find out. I say, yeah, my friend bought one when I got out of high school for three hundred and fifty dollars. And they're like, oh my god, you should have bought ten of them. And like at the time, they were a ten-year-old Chevy. Who knew they were going to be collectible? You know. So anyway, I get them talking a little bit, a few sentences off topic, kind of low, you know, lowers their uh, uh, apprehension because they're dealing with a salesman. They think I'm a professional salesman, and uh, but I'm, I'm accessible. The thing is, like people call me up all the time, and and they call me up late at night. I'm watching television. I put it on mute. I answer the phone. The phone rings. I answer it. That's Michael's job, and he does a great job. He does all the heavy lifting. He gets the phone to ring. I got to eat. I've never had a sales job where all my customers call me. You have no idea. That's like half the job is getting a voice on the phone, and uh, they, and also they um, they're calling me at a time when they have the time to talk. They're not in a hurry. They're not eating dinner, and they have a need, you know. And I just try to fill that need and just give them a realistic expectation. I can't give them a guarantee. I, I mean, I lose one or two customers a week because I won't use the word guarantee. I can't guarantee anything. I'm looking for an independent driver on your route and on your schedule. You know, I can't guarantee. You know, even they're willing to meet my price. They want me to use the word guarantee. And I'm like, what do you expect me to do if I don't get you a driver by then? <laughs> do you want me to give you a free transport? What is the guarantee involved? You know what I mean? Like, you got you buy a lawnmower and it's guaranteed for a year and it dies in six months. They give you a new lawnmower. You know, all right, fine. That's a guarantee. If I, my truck doesn't show up on Friday like you want, but I guarantee, then what? Then what? What do you get? You know what I mean? So anyway, I, I tell these people. Other people gave me guarantees. I'm like, they give it to you in writing, you know? And, and what were they going to give you if, if the car didn't get picked up? And they really can't answer that. <laughs> I love it, man. You know, it's funny. I'm, as I told you, I was a dispatcher. Oh, we got to let the sirens. Uh, okay, so I was a dispatcher. And uh, I was I was calling about a load on a load board, and it was a Friday, and the day was ending, and uh, I called, and uh, wasn't the greatest route, and it was a it was clearly a residential customer, which I all had, I had to sniff all of it out. They're just like, when can you pick it up? When? So I got the information, and it just wasn't paying enough. I said, you know, it's just not paying enough. And they said, well, the rate is guaranteed. And I said, well, by who? <laughs> well, it's guaranteed. It's a guaranteed rate, so we can't negotiate. I said, well, but nobody's booked it. Yeah, so you need to raise the rate to guarantee that somebody will book it. 
yeah, but we've already guaranteed the rate. And, and, and you hear this kind of talk and you're thinking, is it? Is, are we living in an imaginary state of consciousness? Right? Because some people say things that's, that's not possible. Or, or if you believe that, then, I don't know, I like what you said, well, then you should call that other guy back. <laughs> yeah. That is fantastic. That's another kind of guarantee. I guarantee I can't move it at that price, you know? <laughs> so there's guarantee works both ways. That is fantastic. Um, I had a couple of things there. Okay, so how do you, okay, how do you think, how do you explain to people how expensive trucking is? as part of getting them to be realistic. How, how do you do that? Well, I tell them to put their, themselves in the mind of a trucker. First off, a truck gets five miles to the gallon, right? Bang, you got your fuel costs. Those trucks cost, I don't know, 150, 200,000. And he's got expenses, he's got his insurance. He has, you know, whatever, he has to make, he has to make a living. And it, you know, he has to pay a broker, he's got to pay his, his uh, 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 transport company to schedule the route for him. And he's got to make a profit when he comes home after a cross country run, he's got to, he's got to hand his wife the money to pay the mortgage and feed the kids and and do whatever. So right. everybody has to make money, you know. And right. uh, one thing I, I I stress to the customer is like everybody here is on your side because nobody makes a penny until I get your car picked up and delivered. Nobody's here trying to throw obstacles in your way or come over reasons why well, you need to do this first. You need to fill that up. No, everybody here is doing everything they can to get your car picked up and delivered. But until that happens, nobody makes a penny. This is what I do for a living. If I can't get a car picked up and shipped, I don't get paid. I don't eat. I don't pay my mortgage. So, you know, so anyway, we're all on your side here. I tell them that everybody is working for you to get their car moved, you know. And so uh, try to just differentiate myself from the average broker. Because I've worked other places. I've worked in phone rooms. And somebody calls in for a quote. I mean, yeah, that'll be $900. And they hang up on them. Like, no, because realistically, no, nobody called and say, I want to ship my car. Everybody says, I want a quote, you know. So. Anyway, you know, in, in, in between the time, while I'm putting their information in on the on, on the computer and to get a quote out of the out of the central dispatch, I'm asking them questions. I'm talking to them. Again, I'll compliment their car. I'll speak about. I'm a car guy anyway. So somebody got a car. I'm like, wow, really? You got a, a a Lamborghini this that you know, or a, Mas a Maserati that you know? Really? How long have you had that? Is it fast? You know? And people love that. You know what I mean? Like, or they, they mention any kind of car. I'm like, nice. That's a pretty reliable car. You got. You got an eight-year-old Toyota. Those things are reliable, aren't they? And they, you know, they, they like that. Oh yeah, I love that car. I had it since I was new, you know. And so people, you know, a little, a few sentences off topic gets people to relax a little bit, gets their sales guard down a little bit, because then I got to hit them with the price. And everybody wants, everybody wants to negotiate. I'm like, and this is my, this is my quote. Everybody's calling me looking for the lowest price. I gave you that. If I gave it any lower, then I won't be able to ship it. And that's it. You know, I, I really don't, I don't negotiate on price because I know what it takes to ship it. You know, I've been doing it long enough. Listing a car that Michael can't find a driver for does nothing for either one of us but waste our time. So I'd rather, you know, have a pleasant conversation with you and send you on your way. If you think somebody else can ship it for less, go for it. I know with my, when talking to Michael, we know if, uh, if a price once in a while, not going happen all the time, a driver will call and ask for more money. They're not doing that lately because we're paying more money. But every once in a while, I get somebody who wants an extra hundred bucks, so I'm obligated to call the client. And say, listen, I got a driver. You pick up on time, drop off on time. Thing is, he wants another hundred dollars. What do you want to do? I can't spend your money. What do you want to do? You can spend the extra hundred, or we can keep looking. You know, I, I personally am yeah, burdening. Yeah, what's that like? Because do you ever get accused of like, well, you're just wanting more money? I don't know. It, it's got to be kind of tough. Is that it, tough? It is. I, I, I don't like. I don't. It, it's awkward. I don't like doing it. But yeah. like I say, what I, what I do is I. I don't really ask for money. I. I what I. What I, what I say is like. I got a driver, but he wants an extra hundred bucks. What do you want to do? You know, and so exactly. I, I, I put it in their lap. I like that. I, 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 and I say, I, I can't spend your money. This is your money. You know what I mean? We agreed on 900 and I thought 900 would get it moved. And I, I think it still might, but I got a guy who can pick it up on Friday like you want and drop it off on Tuesday like you want. It's just another hundred bucks. And most people are like, you know what? I spend so much money moving an extra hundred bucks. Doesn't matter. Go for it. You know, once in a while, you say, you know what? I only had a you know 900 uh, uh, budgeted for the job. I don't have an extra hundred to spend. All right, we'll keep looking, you know. Yeah, but uh, let's keep looking. But but, but typically it, uh, uh, it has been, it doesn't happen very often. It's only a few times a month that you know I get a driver who wants more money and I'll have to call a client. But again, 
I've spent time on the phone with them. They know my voice. They know me. And I call them up and I tell them, listen, this is what came down. And they uh, uh, they pretty much accept it. Very, I've never had anybody go off on me and say cancel the order or anything like that. And, you know, it's interesting in in because from the beginning, being more, you know, comfortably conversational, you probably make it easier than when something comes up that wasn't foreseen, such as the driver wants more money. Right. So having that personal touch, that's that's a big deal. This is a personal transaction. And I think also you might in some way be reminding the shipper how much they love that car. This is a big deal. That's one of the things that also it's you're not shipping like a cabinet in the garage that you use sometimes. This is your car. Which for a lot of people is, you know, it's a really big deal. Yeah, well, it's the second biggest investment, and they may really like that car. They may have owned it for 20 years, owned this as brand new. They wash it every Saturday. They polish it every Sunday, whatever. You know, they they, they, they treasure that car. Other people, it's just transportation. They're sending a car to their, their kid to, uh, uh, off to college. That's another thing we're not seeing during COVID. Not very many people are sending cars off to college with their kids because they're doing distance learning and mm. et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing, you know. So uh, we're kind of missing out on that market. But. There's still a need. I'm still. We're still shipping cars every day. Phone is still ringing every day. You know the business. Business is still out there. People still have needs. And like when somebody complains about about the uh, the price, I'm like, listen, nobody can do it for less. I'm like, so what are your alternatives? You're going to drive? I said it's 2,700 miles. You're going to be on the road five or six days. You're going to be using up gas. And then there's accidents and breakdowns, hotel rooms, meals, and then you got to fly back. You're not going to save a penny. I was just going to say, yeah. Convenient. To have a truck pull up in front of your house, pick up your car and deliver it to where you want it to go. Isn't that so much easier? You know, and uh, I just and, and they think about it. You're right. I'm not going to save a dime drive across country, you know, and what's your time worth? Nothing. You know, you're going to spend five, six days on the road. Is it worth nothing? You know, well, I, it's, it, it's interesting you say because I got an email the other day. There was a family emergency and they wanted their car shipped right away. So here's a question, right? For, especially right now, how much? How much notice do you think people need? How much time should they allow before they actually expect their car to get shipped from the time they make this? You know, in, in the event of an emergency, like say if, if I decided the transport is a $1,200 transport, I had this happen to me. A guy was calling me up shipping a very expensive car, a Bentley or something like that. And he's like, he called me up on a Thursday night, like 9, 10 p.m. I'm talking to this guy. So I need it picked up tomorrow. You wanted to go enclosed. Enclosed is always oh. tougher because they're because they're rarer. I'm like, all right, it's a $1,200 transfer. You want to pick it up tomorrow? Yeah, make it $1,600. I'll guarantee you a driver by tomorrow. And <laughs> next morning, I had 400 bucks above market. You will get a driver. You know, if you're in an emergency, you got to hurry. I had normal price is $1,500. Let's go $1,700. We'll get a driver at that. You, you go a few hundred bucks above market. Like in this case, it was $400 above market. Next morning, I had a driver and it was picked up and it was gone. And so that's how you handle an emergency transport. But typically, I try to give people realistic expectations. Like a you know, week, I said, don't get me wrong. Few sometimes, days. Well, you know, you know, sometimes we'll find a driver in an hour or two. You know, that happens. If you got lucky. Priced right, right common route. Right, right, right exactly. On, on the route, on the schedule, and we're offering enough money. And the driver will say, yeah, I'm, the, the car's not shipping for four or five days. But yeah, I'll take that, you know. But typically, before we find a driver, uh, it was typically one to three days. Sometimes it could take up to five, you know. But, if, if, and once it starts getting uh, uh, their pickup date, say, is on the 5th of August, now it's the 6th of August, I call the customer up. I'm like, there's three things about the car. Pickup, that'll keep a car from shipping. A, a, a bad pickup location, you're in the middle of nowhere. Bad drop-off location, middle of nowhere. And too low a price. And so you can fix one and two with number three. Just offer more money. And I said, we're not moving it at 900. Let's go up to 1,000. You know, and I, and I explained them. All that money is going to the driver. I'm not asking for more money for me. I get a percentage of the of the deposit, and that's it. Doesn't matter what I'm shipping, I get a percentage of the deposit, and that's it. But I'm not asking you for all this money. I'm asking for is going to the driver and to benefit you and get your car shipped. It's not much, it's not more more profit in my pocket. Like when you go in to buy a car, that you pay more money. Well, that money's getting to be divvied up among the dealership. Not the case here. We get a percentage of the deposit, and that's it. You know? Yeah. I just say that Joe is very good at setting expectations. <laughs> I see that. I see that. And I, I think that that is, I think that is a fundamental agreement or ingredient in auto transport. 
Um, I want to say this too. Ron at Traffic Inc., he just threw up a super chat. There's some great stuff happening in the live chat. And, um, and Ron, he tunes in. He's been part of the show when we do Wheel of Topics. Thank you so much, Ron, for your contribution to Auto Transport Intel, both live and and uh financially in the live chat really really appreciate that gary at gartho logistics he was saying this joe putting the broker's fee in writing goes a long way during the negotiation um and i wanted to ask you joe um you mentioned deposit can you talk a little bit more about the how the best way to handle the deposit process well, i see well, questions well. about the deposit well, when I first get uh, somebody calls me, I ask them, my name's Joe, what's your first name? So their name will be like Dave, you know, so I only ask for the first name. I don't ask for a last name. I got their phone number on my phone, so I don't ask for that. But I start going, what city you need your car picked up in? You know, what city you need it dropped off in? What kind of car do you have? What year is it? Et cetera. And then I, 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 I give them a price. And so then and we start discussing that. I'm like, I always ask for the order. Do you want to put this thing together and get this thing going? You know, and. A lot of, well, and then again, they'll say, well, I want to make a few more calls first. I'm like, again, well, what is it I'm not offering you that you think you can get from somebody else? So what is it you're looking for? I got to I got to justify the price. I'm charging this much because that's what the, the market's going to demand. And so when it gets to the deposit, I, I, I explain this very, very clearly. The, what, as I start filling out, here's your pickup address, who's the contact, you know, all that information. I said, by the way, the way payment is done, because we haven't discussed payment at all at this point, uh, just price. The way payment's done is we take a $200 deposit on a credit card, but we don't charge the credit card until after I assign you a truck driver. Until I do that, this entire transaction isn't going to cost you a penny. There's no charge whatsoever for me listing your car. But until I, need I your assign you a truck. Until yes. I assign you a truck driver, you do not owe me a penny, but I need to collect your credit card information. And that, that's an unbreakable rule. They say, well, buy me a truck first, then I'll give you credit card information. Nope, the owner of the company says, I can't do that. So it's not even my call, you know, can't do that. Because what happens is we end up not getting a credit card, the car gets picked up and delivered, and we don't make any money. It's happened to us a couple of times, not often. Most people are honest, but some people will give you a bad credit card and give you a bad phone number and a bad email because they f figured out how to snake the system. It's only happened a few times. Most people are honest. They give you a credit card, it's a good credit card. 98% of the time, you know, we are running to one or two people and that's just the way it is. But that, that is the most crucial information that I need to get is a credit card number. And I get that as delicately as I can. All right. I need your credit card yeah. information for the deposit, but it doesn't cost you anything until after I've done my job. And then it's the same thing with the truck driver. You don't pay him when he picks up the car. He has to deliver the car undamaged before you hand him his payment. And so everybody gets paid after they do their job. Just like you, they don't pay you on Monday for the work you're going to do all week. They pay you on Friday for the work you did two weeks ago. And so that's how it is. We get paid after we've done our job. And that kind of puts people's mind at rest. Well, and I've heard some shippers, residential shippers, I think is primarily what it is, they get charged a deposit before any truck was assigned, right? And that would be an out-of-order transaction, right? They, they, yeah, well, they, they, you don't know if you're going to ship that car. Now you've taken $200 out of the customer's pocket. And, uh, and we, but we, you've, you've heard of that. I mean, you read these things online where somebody took their deposit and then took off and they never heard from them again. And so what, what, what do you think a shipper could do to know that a truck has been assigned? I guess, do you provide the carrier's information? This is your carrier? Yeah, carrier information, phone number, and the transport company. And I tell everybody, don't call the truck driver. He doesn't know where he's going. He's told where to go by his transport coordinator. Because, like I said, traveling cross-country, a 10-car hauler. That's the safe way to go cars. anyways. Carriers don't want to answer the phone a lot of the times, right? They're yeah, well, loading, well, yeah. unloading, getting grilled by the DOT. I mean, who knows? Yeah, you got a housewife calling you every six hours. Where are you now? Where are you now? They don't want to deal with that. So you call the you call the transport company, and they're the one who scheduled the driver's route. They know where he is. They know when he's going to get there. Yeah, he'll be there Thursday sometime between noon and four. You know that kind of thing. You know, and so yeah, call them. And so they call me like, did you call the driver? No, I don't talk to the driver. That's not my department. I talk to the client. And I said, but let me give you the person to call. You need to call the transport company. I'll pull up their order. Did you get the email? Yeah, did you get the other ones I sent you? Let me resend you to dispatch notice. All the information's on there. You know, call the transport company, Acme Transport Limited. Don't call Dave the driver because he won't pick up the phone. 
because he's driving. He's got other things to do. He could be loading or unloading a car or whatever. And besides, he doesn't know where you are on his list because he gets tech messages all day long. And yep, you're outside of Dallas. You got three cars to drop off. You got two to pick up and do it in this exact oh. order. How about, oh my gosh, how about when the resident says, well, can't you just deliver mine first? Well, <laughs> you know, you know I've, I've never had a customer say that. Really? But, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the driver is on a route, and so yeah, you, right. it has to be convenient for him. The same thing like Michael says, we only advertise in major cities. He's on a route on a major artery. He's not taking a two-lane blacktop cross country, you know, and so like I said, if you can meet the driver here, It'd be much easier than going to there, you know. Like if you you're in Louisiana, tough place to get to, but you know how far away are you from Louis, from New Orleans? Well, if you're 40 minutes away, can you meet the driver there? You know that makes it so much easier. I try to, I, I try not to get uh, even right up difficult transports because we we have we can't ship them. They're they're very very difficult to ship, and so it, but if if a, we give uh, 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 explain get realistic expectations, saying you need to meet the driver on a major artery. You know, the, the, the 40 runs through there. Can you meet him at an exit on the – and I, I could put that in the driver's note. Willing to meet the driver on the freeway, you know, and bang, that makes it a lot a lot easier. And so the things of that nature, sometimes uh, they'll meet the driver at the airport or they got an auto mall or something like that that every driver who drives through that town knows where that is and they, and they can hook up that way, you know, but if they're in a difficult location. Um, do you think that there is a driver shortage? Do you think we're? Me, I don't understand. Do you think there's a carrier shortage? Do you? Do you? Uh, cur currently, it, it's not. It's not really a shortage. It's just that there's less competition, and thus it's driving the price up. You know. Yeah, you think it, so? Because uh, the price has been going up, especially in the, in the last month or so. The price has gone up twenty percent, fifteen percent, easy. You know. What do you and think I, are it, the? What are the factors? What? If you I, had to, I, I mean, yeah. personally, I, I think I think it's it's just uh, when, when a driver's is like say he's leaving L.A. and he's driving to Miami, he's got to grab ten cars. He's gonna he's gonna grab the ones that are paying the most, and he can get them because nobody else has grabbed them, or there's less so, people grabbing them. So less people grabbing them, prices have gone up. It's an interesting. We're in an interesting time, aren't we, guys? Yeah, we are. But but a, a lot of other things affect the price. Uh, uh, the more popular a route. Like, for example, for a while there, L L.A. to Dallas was like, everybody from L.A. called me. I said, let me guess, you're going to Dallas. Everybody was moving to Dallas for a while there. And so you can ship a car cheaper. You'd like to get 800 bucks, But if you post it at 7, a driver will grab it because otherwise he's going to be driving with six cars instead of 10. Because a lot of drivers are on that route. Usually, yeah, well, usually that's a pretty cheap route, isn't it? I mean, L.A. to Dallas? Or am I uh, it, Dallas to L.A.? But that's not that... You don't make a lot of money. It, on that it, route. It, 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 it's a very, it's a very popular route. It's two population centers. You know, LA is huge. I mean, and uh, Dallas. I know is very that's why I don't understand why the cars never pay more. I don't know why. But it, it, it's competition. It's all about supply and demand. It's competition. I know, but the traffic and all the other elements. My point is that uh, really, I, I, I rarely do I feel like I was able to book good paying vehicles in or coming out of Los Angeles. They just never seem to pay enough. For as much trouble as it is, you know, take take a car hauler into Hollywood. Good luck with that, because you know transporters know that they're not going to go into Manhattan, you know, because of the bridges. We, we, we ship cars into Manhattan. Well, some guys go there, but how many carriers actually drive into the island and the boroughs? It's not the majority, right? No. It's the tolls. It's, it's a distinct bucks. minority. Yeah. But when you, it, when in other cities, like you, you'll talk to some carriers. No, yeah, I'm not going downtown Chicago again. I'm not doing it. So some carriers know these cities. And actually, that brings us into probably like flip of the week carriers. You get carriers that take cars that pay, they don't pay enough, and they're going into areas they know nothing about. And anything is possible. Nothing. Well, <laughs> <you're a tradition. laughs> that, that, that really hasn't uh, really become an issue. It, it's just uh, uh, proximity to a major artery, proximity to a population center exactly. are probably the two biggest keys. And of course, it all comes down to getting getting pricing it right, getting enough money for the driver where it's right. worth his while. And if you don't do that, nothing else matters. You could be in the best location 
on both ends, and it doesn't matter if you're not paying enough. Like I said, you can fix one un, undesirable pickup location, undesirable drop-off location, too low a price. Three things that will prevent your car from shipping, and you can fix one and two Ooh, with number three. I love Just it. throw more money at it. What are the three things that will prevent your car from shipping? What are they? Uh, undesirable pickup location, undesirable drop-off location, and too low a price. This is good. Now, this is good stuff. Undesirable drop-off location, right? That was number one. Undesirable pickup location. And drop-off location. And undesirable price. What was number one again? Did I get that correct? Un undesirable pickup location. Okay. Pick you're, you're going. Drop you're, you're, you're coming from. Price. You're coming from. You know, Bullfrog, Montana. Okay, I got to get a driver up there. Okay. Well, can you, I, I, look, I look it up on the map. Oh my God, that's 150 miles away from the biggest city, Billings. You know, which probably has 50,000 people. Can you get the car to Billings? All right. But I, I tell him, coming out of Montana, we shipped it, like one car out of Montana. It took weeks to find a driver. He's going from. You know, but we found one. You know, we, the, the driver goes up there, but he has to wait till he has a load. You can't go up there and pick up one car, and you can't go up there empty. So, yeah, but you can ship a car out of Montana. It's technically possible. Is it going to happen in a week or three I, days? No. I, I think we just got closer to the billboard I was talking about earlier. Number one, undesirable pickup location. Number two, undesirable drop location. Number three, undesirable price. How cheap is your car shipping? I don't know. I haven't finished it yet, but we're I'm brainstorming. It's live, right? But... I really want to figure out how to quickly let more people know that it's it's not this simple, easy peasy, your drivers around the corner stuff. The first time I ever heard that, yeah, I mean, a, a, a broker told a customer during that initial phone call, yeah, we got a driver right down the street or whatever, that's, what? What? Why would you do that? Joe would not do that unless he literally was down the street. How would I know that until I went looking for one? You know exactly. How would you even know that? Unless you had, you know. Well, now here. So is are there have advances in technology helped you with your job and working with shippers? Are there any advances in technology that have helped? You... Uh, there's, 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 there's nothing like, uh, for example, like if you were to call up an Uber, you can look at a map and it shows there's five Ubers all hovering you know, in your neighborhood. So you know you're going to get one in a few minutes. There's right. nothing like that for the auto transportation industry where the ah, truckers are. All right. I'm glad you said that. Hey, um, I want to ask the live chat. Is there no technology that will help shippers or brokers or carriers know better what how to manage uh like you know yeah it, the app we just talked about it say that again there is no what'd you say there's no app that there's will... no app like for example like when you when you're calling an uber you look at the, the the app and it shows you there's five cars in your neighborhood you can see the cars physically see where they are via the the the, the, the uber app and so you know that when you when you hit uh, pick me up. There's somebody ten minutes away, you know. But as far as where where is the closest? People say, "Would well, you have any uh, truck drivers near my house?" I'm like, I don't know that. I have to go looking for a driver, and I explain to them about the central dispatch industry standard. The drivers go looking for them. The drivers don't. I want to talk, and, and there's those people who call you up, say, "I'm going to speak directly to the truck driver. I don't want to go through a broker." What are the odds? First off, truck, truck drivers don't advertise their phone numbers, and how are you going to find a truck driver? That is on your route and that on happens. your schedule. That's you know? right. That is that is such a good point, which is why many carriers many carriers become brokers to service leads that are not on their routes. And what are the chances that new lead is on your route? None. Right? Not, it's not real good. It's not a good chance. But let me ask you this, going back to the app question, do you think there will be an app? I know somebody who was working on one. Right. But there's a problem. It's not like Uber. I mean, I, I understand. I mean, that's just the concept. Yeah. But all these trucks around, they're all going different places. I mean, it's still the same problem that Joe was saying. You know, is it going to be going from this location to that location? You know, because they could be going anywhere. 
So I don't know if an app like that, unless they write where they're going to and the guy has to figure it out. Okay, well, I need to get to Iowa City. Yeah, Springfield, Illinois, that's along the way. I guess I could take you to there. Well, that's it, it, it's extremely intelligent technology that will ultimately be that kind of Uber-esque solution. But yeah, it is that, that's going to require infrastructure. Right. That's going to require well, infrastructure in the, in the billions of dollars. It's going to require warehouses full of servers to keep track of that kind of data. <laughs> where, where like, where, where it's like every every single truck that's driving by your house, it says where it was coming from and where it's going. Like, you know, like I, I, I imagine nothing's impossible with technology, but it would require billions of dollars of infrastructure, warehouses full of servers. Programmers working for years to get it trained out. <laughs> yeah, it, it, look what I mean. Look, look at Uber. They're a 140 million billion dollar company, and they have yet to make a profit. You know well, what I mean? So, well, I tell you what. Anyway, that, well, and I, I like the way that we're because we're 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 really we're talking. And we're now we're breaking things, and that's good. Um, but uh, I, I, it would seem that eventually there is this first freight. Right now, freight is has worked on has technology working in this arena and then after freight a long leap later is auto transport but i know this i know even in auto transport so on freight you can you can you can build a load in general freight and how it's going to fit on the truck what kind of technology would you need that would figure out every time you add a car how you're going to load the truck given all the pickups and deliveries and all the types of vehicles. That's well, that, that's what the, the, the transport company does. They like, like, they tell them exactly what order to pick dispatcher. up the cars and drop them off. So that when they go to drop exactly. off a car, the one they got to drop off is always the last one on. So all I got to do is unload one car. They're not pulling off three cars every time they got to drop one off. That's well, a total waste of time. You got to. But, strap them and back them off well sometimes but the only maybe the only place to fit that car is in the belly and the other ones are taking up the other spots i mean those things do happen it's not optimal i imagine, I imagine it's not a hundred percent but for as many times every time they drop off a car they're not unloading three to get at the one they want not you know every I mean? time but i ty i'd love to hear what ty says there's some great stuff happening in the live chat I, exactly. Jake says it happens a lot. I think it happens more than the carrier wishes, just because of the way that you have to maximize your space. And then here's another problem. Explain to the resident that the driver can't afford to drive straight to your house with empty spots. Because that's just not, that's not going to work. He needs a load. He's got to fill, yeah. He's got to fill all of his spots, unless you want to pay for it, you know. But that's that's not a fun. Well, how much is the spot? I don't know. Call it a grand. Give him another grand, and he'll drive straight to your house, and he'll be there right before your hair appointment. Yeah. Or after. Um, right. Jake talks about yeah. Jake says the equipment configuration. Um, I. I have not yet heard of an of an auto transport software that can figure out how to load your truck based on what cars you have, what pickup and delivery locations you have, and then as that continues to change. I've never heard of that software. Yeah, I I, I think that'd be really difficult. Like Joe right. point, I don't I don't know about how much it would cost, but. It would be a tremendous undertaking, and it would take a lot of coordination, and then it would take a lot of marketing to get it out there. And you can't even market it till you test it. So it could happen, but not in this millennium. It would require a huge investment in technology. It would require programmers for for years. It would require <laughs> warehouses full of servers. It would require a lot to put that together. People's you're not going to do, do that on your Jiba laptop sitting in your office. That's not going to happen. Well, there goes that Kickstarter. <laughs> 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 oh, you guys! So it's ten fifteen. So I'm, you know, I'm thinking. Well, do we cover everything? Is there anything? Here, let me just pass it over to the live chat. Is there any? Do we miss anything? 
Let me check the live chat. Uber works only in metropolitan areas like tow trucks. That's why. Uh, oh, Muzi at Truckify is, um, is weighing in um, on the technology front. Um, let's, let's see. Jay, yeah, Jake at RPM. He's still in here. You know, um, it is an interesting uh, vertical to talk about, brokering. And, and you know... It seems like, you know, you saw, did you guys, did you catch any industry news where I was reading stuff off of Facebook and stuff like that? Like, on Facebook, in those, there are some Facebook groups, if you talk about, if you're not in a, there's actually broker Facebook groups, and it's, you can talk about brokering there. But if you talk about brokering in a non-broker Facebook group, one that's more carrier-centric, it can get pretty ugly. <laughs> now, uh, these verticals still stay pretty segmented. And it, I, I feel like with what we just talked about, you know, we're, we're, I feel like we're creating rope bridges to connect these verticals because I think we're speaking the same language. Much of what you've said is in favor of what the carrier believes. Right? You're not trying to rip we off don't. a carrier. No. no. We want to rip anybody off. We want exactly you know, we service for the customer, and we want the guy who's doing the job for us to do a good job and be paid properly for it. Exactly. So, shipper wins, broker wins, carrier wins, industry wins. Right. That's the, that should be the goal. But we know that there are some places where loads get posted and there's lowballing and it gets, it gets kind of ugly. Well, that, that comes about from these companies that buy leads. Okay. That's a major part of it. You know, like I said, we decided to go organic. We went for the reputation. And then we have Joe setting expectations. You know, so... so that to be a good combination so and and i appreciate that because that's what i'm trying to get at is we have to identify the quicksand that makes the verticals go at each other and some of that quicksand is the lead stuff right i think so um i, I really think that competing to get the lowest price to the customer um can put you in a bad situation because the times are changing all the time. Gas prices could change. This time we have a COVID. It could be anything. It could be the coming of the season. It could be everybody's going to Florida and they can't get a load coming out. I mean, there's so many variables in this business, you know? And I think that maybe your analogy with a rope is good because you need that flexibility that a rope can offer, you know, when you're crossing that thing and it's moving back and forth. You know? That's right. I, don't, I, don't I actually you... visualized a rope bridge. Yeah, it, right. Cause it, it does. You're right. I wasn't thinking that, but it allows the flexibility because it, it is. There's always these constant moving parts. Yeah, that's. There's a lot of moving part in the moving industry. <laughs> that's why they call it that. So. Ooh, put that on the billboard. There's a lot of moving parts in the moving industry. I really, I really want to figure this out, and I hope that. Well, I believe if, if there's anywhere that we can figure out how to keep people informed quickly and efficiently, I believe I believe Auto Transport Intel is the platform where that can be done. And the only way we're going to get there is if we keep talking among the verticals. And so I really appreciate you guys taking the time to spend with us on a Tuesday night to talk about this important topic. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Your, your dime you've given us. Yeah, thanks for the exposure, and uh, we're going to recommend your show to others. Dude, that's awesome. I appreciate it. I'm putting your website in the live chat again. It's M-E-T-T-I-I-N-T-L dot com. It's okay. Medi International Vehicle Transport and Car Shipping. I also saw there is a there's an 800 number right we have a couple yeah um i'm i'm gonna put it in here call 866 
six two zero. Yeah. And then what's the last four? Is it one seven seven six? Eight six 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 two zero one seven seven six. And uh, this information it's it's geared towards shippers, but if you're a carrier and you're like, Yeah, I wanna I wanna get in their network, I like these guys. What would be a good way to connect with you? Same information? Yeah, we'd be very open to that. We'd like to know the carriers and their routes, um, what would be a fair price for them so we could be competitive, and we'll, we'll give them feedback. This is what we're seeing out there. You know, we just have this particular markup, and, you know, we go from there. Is you know, there an email address also or a number that someone can text or do you have any, anything like that? I'm just asking. Well, it would be our cell phones. I mean, if, if they're doing sales, that would be Joe's number. Do you, put, be, do you put probably. Joe's number out there? I don't want to put anything out there that, you know, you don't want to put out. I don't know. No, well, we, you, you can put out my cell phone number. I, I give my cell phone number to every one of my customers. Awesome. And when you call me back, call my cell phone number. This way you'll always reach me, you know? And so I give them my cell phone number and, okay. and they call it. Awesome. That's how Ty is. Ty gives his number to everybody. Okay. You want six, it? Six, six, one, I think I got it. 619-517-3435. That's it. Okay, it's in the live chat. Okay, the calls are going crazy. We've got, you know, we've just sold 54 bracelets. Okay, I just went into QVC mode. But, I mean, that's cool. Putting your number out, you can you can get text messages. They can call you on your cell, become a carrier, become a shipper. Who else would contact you in auto transport to help, you know, grow and network? Would that be it? Car dealerships, used car dealerships. Dealerships? Auction houses. Perfect. Dealers. Auctions. Military. EBay, a lot of people buying cars on eBay these days. Carriers and shippers. Well, and that's another thing. So as far as the marketplace itself, you guys, do you feel like you, you know, do you spend a lot of time uh, looking at different places? Like somebody mentioned uh shipping wars anything any any location whether it's craigslist or you know you think about the marketplace in places where carriers are interacting with customers right and dealers are offering final mile do you find yourself thinking about all those things reading articles do you do that well i read articles all the time but um Right. He's focused on, he's ready to, for his phone. Are, Joe, are you available seven days a week? I am. Yeah, and I answer the phone and I answer the phone every time it rings. You know, I, what I have to do is when I go to, when I go to sleep and I'm a night owl, I'm up to one, one thirty. I have to put it on. Do not disturb because people will call me. They'll be on the East coast. They'll assume we're open 24 hours and they'll call me at three 30 in the morning. I just leave my phone on. I answer the phone at three 30 and they can tell I just woke up. They say, what were you doing? Sleeping? It's three thirty in the morning. Of course, I was sleeping. They hang up on me. I'm like, that's it. I'm just, I, 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 I put do not disturb before I go to sleep. And plus, I get all the uh, people call me up. They want to give me a commercial loan. They want to do our website for us. I'm like, we already have that. You know, Michael has oh all gosh. his SEO So being many done. people actually. Yeah. yeah you oh, see a lot I, of that. I, 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 that. That's half my days fielding calls from people marketing. Can I speak to your HR department? Can I speak to your marketing department? Are you guys hiring truck drivers? You know, I got to explain to people now, you know, I'm, and, and I know these guys are looking for work. So I'm like, I'm, I, 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 I'm nice to them. Like, you know, we're brokers. We don't actually employ any truck drivers. You know, do you own a truck? No. I'm like, well, we don't own any trucks either. So I can't, I can't help you, you know, but uh, uh, if you're, if you bought, if you bought a, a auto, auto hauler, you know about the central dispatch, et cetera, and how to go about acquiring customers and how to go about choosing a route, you know, and, uh, I guess I guess most people choose the route because what I said tell customers is if they either got a family on one end or the other or some way in the middle they found a route that's profitable for them that's convenient for them and as many drivers as there are is 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 uh, there's many reasons for why they chose the route they have you know and, and some some drivers drive the eastern seaboard some drivers go coast to coast some drivers drive the, the west coast whatever and you're just looking some for drivers are home every night route. yeah well and this is what's interesting is Ty. This is so funny. Ty Thompson, he's in the live chat. Um, in many ways, Ty is my sidekick. 
right? You guys know each other really well. Well, Ty and I have that too. And he's in the live chat. And he just was like, did he say dealers, auctions, and carriers? So, you know, the thing is, it's uh, I told Ty, he, Ty is probably going to reach out to you on your cell at some point. He connects with everybody. And what you were just saying about carriers, and that's my point, is that when you talk about carriers and lanes and routes and do you hire truck drivers, um, there is there are times where the role we perform does not directly overlap with somebody else, but there's a slight overlap. And so sometimes we reach out to our network to help get something accomplished for somebody we know that we want to see them accomplish whatever it is. And so uh, Joe and Ty, you guys should have each other's contact information. So if you run into that carrier that's looking for more information, you throw them to Ty because that's what he does. He works with carriers. So... Um, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was thanking you, and then we opened an upper, another can of, of tangent and information. We could probably keep going, but I, I, I think I don't think that would be fair. Although you guys are on the, you're on the Pacific Coast, whereas some people right now are like, Jay, I got to go to bed. <laughs> right? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stop. I get that sometimes. So, gentlemen, I put your contact information in the live chat. Again, thank you so much. This was an awesome show. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to say farewell. Keep in touch. Let me know what I can do to help, okay? All right. Thank you, Jay. All right. And I'm ending the meeting, and bang, the meeting is over. Um, That was pretty cool. That, uh, that that, I think that, that sheds light on why... Uh, they are an award-winning broker. Um, lots of great information. Oh, can you still hear me okay? Let's check. Check, check, check. I mean, it's a little late for a mic check, but, you know, I like to I like to check on these things and make sure I'm okay. Check, check, check. That's ah, okay. All right, so you guys are still in the... <laughs> He's doing a mic check at 1030 Central? Wow. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. The live chat was great. So much information. I saw a lot happening, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's cool that we ended on relationships. Oh, man. I love it. I thought it would be a great show. It was a great show. It's an important topic. It's vital that we bring together these verticals. Uh, you saw that um, I was doing that. I'm going to bring this up again. Actually, I just, it was last week that I kind of solidified uh, my pictogram of the ecosystem. You won't find that anywhere else. I made that. I made this today. If you see it anywhere else, they were watching the show. Um, these are the 10 verticals so to speak. I don't know if vertical is the right word, but elements, ingredients that I'm identifying as the auto transport industry ecosystem. Um, I would love feedback on that. Let me know what you think. But um, it is important. We can't we can't shut other parts out. That uh, That's just not... That's not going to work. Can't do that. Um, it's been tried, and it just... It, you know, right? If if you if you beat your head against the wall long enough, then you you maybe you'll find out that you're never gonna stop. If you keep that wall there, you're just gonna keep beating your head against it. It's time to remove the wall. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. <laughs> I forgot the DOT. He's in regulations. The DOT officer is in regulations, which is a whole vertical. And boy, oh boy, is it. Yes, regulations, DOT officer. But thank you. Thank you for testing my theory. And trying to... Everyone's like taking screenshots. It's a boring one. I know, believe me. The uh, Although actually DOT... We did DOT Compliance 101 with Brian Riker. That was a great show. Hey, let's do this. Before I let you go. Um, this is next week. Next week, we're going to meet Autosled. We're going to have uh, Dan, David, 
Peter and Atul on, and they're all with Auto Sled. We're going to meet Auto Sled. You are going to meet Auto Sled, and we're going to find out what Auto Sled is about. It's going to be a great show. I got some other great shows lined up in August. This is going to be a great month. Really looking forward to what's happening. So thank you guys. Yo, Jake just said it. There it is, Jake. Well, Jake, you're going to find out next Tuesday night. You don't want to miss it. Be there or be square. Guys, thank you so much. I'm ending the show. I'm running the car hauler. I've got to go. You've got to. I've got to let you go. you got to let me let you go. Stay safe. I'll see you. Well, I, 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 I used to say I'll see you in a week. But I'll see you Thursday. Thursday is Dispatching Live. Friday is Cars on the Move. Tomorrow we're on autoconversion.net. But I will be back next Tuesday night, episode 151. Meet Auto Sled. You're not going to want to miss it. You want to do the dog again? <laughs> I'll tell you what. The dog is so funny that I'm doing it again. Um, let's see here. I'm going to, I pull up the industry news. Here we go. Here's the dog. Oh, you can't hear it. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, uh, it's not the same if you can't hear it. Hang on. All right. Here comes the dog. Here comes the dog. Guys, I'm going to roll the dog and then I'm going to roll the car hauler and you guys be safe and I'll see you soon. Here comes the dog. Here's your moment of zen. As <laughs> loud as heck. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Hey guys, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier, and you can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2767. Thanks, and have a great day.